beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy anytime we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy anytime we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. stay blessed of the living God on this rainy night we are still gathered in your presence because we believe you we place value on your wisdom we place value on your anointing we place value on you the custodian of the power of God we ask tonight that you visit us in no small way let our hearts be open O oh God your people have made tremendous sacrifices to hear you speak again. I ask, O oh God, that your voice be clear tonight. Let there be all kinds of impartations, O oh God. Bring your people to very strange levels of encounter. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Please be seated if you can. I'd like us to honor again those outside all the overflows it's, it's a lot it's a lot of sacrifice thank you so much we will stand in the golden sea in the new Jerusalem and our will be known That is stable and cry holy is the land. We will worship and adore you evermore. We will stand in the golden city in the new Jerusalem. And our pain and all our struggles will be known. your table and cry holy is the land we will worship and adore you thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus tonight's teaching is very very strategic this is for me it's a teaching for the body of Christ. We are going to pray. It's actually a prayer meeting. If we are unable to finish today, we'll continue 
um, wherever the Lord will grant us grace to stop. But I'm sharing something that I believe will challenge our hearts. It's a very ancient truth that most pastors, most church leaders are forgetting. What I'm sharing with you tonight is the secret of preserving the precepts of God in a territory and a generation. Hallelujah. Open our eyes, O oh God, in Jesus' name. Revelation chapter 5 and verse 10. was a testimony in the heavens that we the redeemed have not only been saved and delivered but that we have been made unto our God kings and priests some versions say a kingdom of priests please listen and it says and we shall reign on the earth we have been made a kingdom of kings and of priests and we shall reign on the earth these two dimensions that the bible reveals is very critical for kingdom advance in any territory the revelation of believers as kings and the revelation of their priesthood the revelation of believers as kings and the revelation of their priesthood the bible says we have been made both kings and priests and that the system of our legislature must be such that it is covered within the scope of our kingship and priesthood. That if we find ourselves living as kings alone, there is a dimension of God and kingdom advance that cannot be effectively dispensed. And if we ignore that dimension as kings and focus on our priesthood alone, as important as that is, we will still rob God from finding expression within a territory. Very important teaching tonight. The first thing I want you to know tonight is that kingdom advancement is territorial. It's an information that I do not want us to be, take lightly and to be careless over. Kingdom advancement, although the mandate is global, God's system of advancement is territorial everybody say kingdom advancement is territorial this for me is already a big deliverance for men of God because sometimes in a bid to take over the world are we together now we do not understand that the system of kingdom advance is the progression of God's purposes across territories are we together from one territory to the other god's idea of globalizing the earth with his presence and ideology is not just jumping from place to place it's not just building branches but being able to establish practically the life the character the nature of the kingdom across a territory so god's rating for a believer for a man of god for a church although your the scope of your mandate may be global but you are rated based on your efficiency across the territory you have been planted per time 
Are we together now? That means that if God has planted koinonia in Zaria in this time and in this season, no matter how effective our teachings, the external ministrations are across the nations of the earth, that is not going to be the parameter for God's rating. Primarily, He is going to judge us based on the efficiency how we have taken advantage of his presence the intelligence he has supplied alongside the grace that has come by the supply of the spirit how we have been able to establish his purposes across this territory so that's the first point i want you to understand tonight that this king priest dimension the system of legislature is highly territorial we live in a time where there is such appetite for expansion and there's nothing wrong with that we love expanding it's a proof of growth but sometimes we can be carried away in the euphoria of the, the sociological effect of expansion and miss out on territorial impact where we are unable to to live out the fullness of god's expectation as a portion to a territory it was jesus that taught us in matthew chapter 5 from verse 14 to 16 matthew 5 14 to 16 this is what jesus said he was teaching and he said ye are the light of the world now when you read and try to understand what jesus is saying just with head knowledge it can be very deceptive because you see the speakings of god is such that he speaks to men when he's speaking to one man he speaks to the nation in him are you getting the point now i told you that when god speaks to us we must learn the character of god's communication i've taught it here again and again in koinonia that number one when god speaks to you he never speaks as though he's speaking to a man the first thing we need to understand about the speakings of God I'm just digressing to help us understand God never speaks to men as though he's talking to men he speaks to men as though he's talking to himself number one number two God's communications are prophetic the relevance of his words always transcend the individual who is hearing it the individual hearing that word is only a representation of all those who will be benefactors of that word God never speaks to a man and then limits the blessing of that word to that individual alone he sent a word to Jacob and then that word lighted upon Israel God always speaks to nations in men are we learning now so every time God speaks to you sometimes you see that the word is heavy because he's speaking in nations through you and if we do not understand the speakings of God, we will carry mandates that were not part of his scope of dealing with us, thinking because you had it. God can speak to me, for instance, and say the vision he has given this ministry is replicating the fullness of God's life across the earth. And I can walk in the deception believing that it simply means that I will pioneer the move of God in every nation. No, when God was speaking, he was speaking to you in me. Are we together now it is through that prophecy that mandate comes to pass now if you do not understand this dimension of God's speakings you will end up in error his rating for men is global prophetically but experientially he deals with men territorially learn this the church in Pagamos the church in Smyrna the church in Philadelphia not the church in the world when the Spirit of God began to speak in revelations from where we would get some of these things he says right the communication was to the whole world but he broke it down to several churches he would come to this church and commend them I have weighed you I have seen what you have done across that territory a and B and C is what you have done in alignment to my purposes D and E, you are in defiance to my precepts. Here's my advice, correct yourself. Otherwise, because of your disalignment, you and that territory will suffer certain things. His system of marking was territorial. It was never generic. He did not generalize his probing. He went to the churches one by one. The church in Pagamos, the church in Philadelphia, 
the church in Smyrna, the church in um, you know Ephesus, and so on and so forth. Kingdom advance is territorial. It is true that we are the light of the world. It is true that we are a city that is set on a hill. But then we must understand that this king priest dimension is such that God places men in territories. When God wants to promote men, he promotes men by supplying three things. Number one, a greater dimension of illumination. I'm, I'm touching on many things now. The first way God promotes men is by opening them to deeper access understanding the secrets and the mysteries of the kingdom the moment the portals of the heavens the portals of revelation are open to you higher and greater than that which you have seen and known then it's a sign of promotion in the spirit number two grace that anointing that agency capacity in the spirit is multiplied unto you and then number three there is an increase and a portioning of greater physical territories not just spirit, spiritual territories alone god lifts men by increasing the span and the influence of their territory are we together acts chapter 1 verse 8 very popular scripture jesus was teaching having resurrected he was having his last session with the disciples who would now be apostles before he would leave and then they asked him a question they said will you at this time restore the nation of israel and he replied by saying it is not for you to know the times and the seasons that the father has put in his care then verse 8 says but ye shall receive power listen carefully after that the holy ghost is come upon you and you shall be not men of god witnesses witnesses unto me then he begins to apportion territories he would have said you will be witnesses unto me all over the world full stop but now he's teaching them because shortly he would be leaving and they would be the ones to start and he's telling them look 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 the goal is the utmost part of the earth but it will be broken into territories first jerusalem then judea then samaria and then it will expand to the utmost part of the earth the first crusade that happened after Christ resurrected, the Bible says that something happened on the day of Pentecost. Now, Peter was preaching. And when Peter began to preach in chapter 2 of Acts, the Bible says that the men were caught to the heart. Listen carefully. And then they said, men and brethren, what shall we do? He said, repent for the remission of your sins and you shall receive this promise. This is the part I'm going to. He said, for this promise is for you are you seeing now for your children oh dear look at this little boy for you for your children for your children's children then he now says as many as are far off even those that the lord will call sometimes you you, you think that the, the bible is too detailed why would god he would have just said this promise is for everyone after all joel already told us he said, I shall pour out my spirit on all flesh. So why tell us again? It is to you, your children, children's children, and to those who are far off, as many as the Lord will call. God's dealings is territorial. That means a true believer's assignment is to look at the whole world, but to focus on the territory you have been apportioned. That is where your ranking, that is where your marking, that is what authorizes you to be apportioned new spheres, both in the spirit and physically. Our obsession for more, our obsession for increase sometimes robs us from the capacity to be faithful. Write this down. Our mandate. As matured believers is to keep the ordinances of God alive across our apportioned territories our mandate in terms of territorial impact is to be preservers of the ordinances of God to ensure that every territory 
as a representation of the presence the power the system the glory of God in that territory if we fail to carry this out then we have failed woefully listen again that our mandate as matured believers with respect to kingdom advance is not just to be preachers not just to be prosperous that's important not just to build churches and ministries but that we become custodians and preservers of the ordinances of God within the territory that has been apportioned to us that means there is a dimension of God he never wants to be lost in Zaria listen carefully there is a dimension of God he never wants to be lost in Nigeria there is a dimension of God he never wants to be lost in Jos in Kogi state and those who are mandated to be preservers of those ordinances are believers not just those who advance and win souls but we are like spiritual librarians mandated to make sure that there is a system that preserves the ordinances of God this in my opinion is one of the biggest mistakes of the Western Church they, they, they lost a part of their assignment they were obsessed with expansion and they forgot that they were mandated so there was a generation that lost touch with another generation and everybody now is guessing his opinion there is a curriculum of a God that has been apportioned to that territory and it was within the power of all the men of God within that dispensation to walk with the Holy Spirit and to preserve that truth when a dimension of God apportioned to a territory is lost, they cannot host certain dimensions of him. The church in Nigeria is a wonderful place. You know that I love the church. I love the body of Christ. But I think that we have to trust God in this time and in this season to our idea of kingdom advance is in many ways faulty and we must trust God together as a united body to correct ourselves because there is this obsession for expansion and there's nothing wrong with that but it looks to me like our concept of kingdom advance is establishing our presence is in as many territories as possible whilst there is a dimension of that we are largely missing it because the idea is not just to establish our presence as the man of God or the denomination our idea is to make sure that in every territory there are men who represent portals for kingdom advance that there be no territory that is barren of a true apostolic and prophetic community that represents the individuals who can host God to his expectation within a territory. If we fail to do that, we have missed a lot. If you're understanding me, say amen. One of my greatest fear in life is finding out that I did not live my life and I did not do ministry to God's expectation. It is a very tragic state because the Bible says that our works will be tried with fire. Are we together now? Yes. Tonight, tonight is, 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 more, is more like a minister's conference. It's a challenge to believers and everybody, but the challenge is, is for those who have been trusted with some measure of spiritual influence over people, groups, territories we must trust God for understanding on how kingdom advance happens there is too much guessing in the body of Christ and everybody believes he is right but our results are showing that there is inefficiency there is inefficiency somewhere there are activities going on there are programs going on conferences going on and nothing is wrong with those things in themselves except that the heart of God's intent is seldom been communicated and that calls for a very serious review of our approach to kingdom advance 
it is God's desire John chapter um, 15 now and verse 8 that we bear fruit and that our fruit abides meaning your fruit can be lost are we together we have lost several foundational precepts as simple as how to know who is saved and who is not is a serious problem for believers that's a sign that something is wrong with the church that we have lost that ability to be able to see the clarity on who is lost and who is saved the average believer does not know what to do with a new convert is that true the moment you bring a new convert to a believer and say please um, I'm trusting you with the destiny of this brother or this sister you will be shocked to find out that that person may even be a pastor in church that that person may even be a deacon that person may be a worker a leader having been around the things of God for many years sitting down under spiritual leaders but not knowing what to do you say well I don't know what to do with this person what is step B after giving your life to Christ how do ordinary believers become spiritual men do we know well enough to be committed to someone that you can give someone who just got born again and they trust him and say look in three weeks we should be able to see certain things happen in this life listen let me tell you the truth if we do not re-examine this I truly believe that a few years from now the lapse of our being out of touch with these spiritual realities will become clear with all humility and with all love for the body of Christ look at the caliber of we pastors and men of God that are handling the pulpit we are largely ignorant people ignorant of the precepts of God ignorance of the methodology of God we just went through a denominations foundation school or a denomination school of ministry or a denominations requirement for ordination and all of a sudden oil is poured upon you and you are granted access to the souls of hundreds thousands and millions of people who submit their minds and their spirits to the mentorship of a confused person who only had the privilege to hold a mic and we keep teaching them and they swallow everything we teach hook line and sinker the life of the church today is a testament of our inefficiency as men of God the average believer does not have an understanding of kingdom advance at all we don't know we don't care we are not even interested what do you do do you know that's why look at the body of Christ the gap between extremely anointed people and those who are squallowing around the ground is too wide what happened are you getting what I'm saying in a whole territory you may find just two or three people at the upper levels spiritually and then that's all right but the next set of people will be so far apart I have seen churches where in a whole church only maybe two or three of the spiritual leaders are truly anointed or on fire out of a church of maybe 30 pastors 27 of them when they come and hold the mic then you see on the board pastor this apostle this and you say my god who called this guy to ministry what is he saying opinions philosophies cunningly devised fables are we together now and look at the quality of men and women who are being produced it's a disaster that requires a quick rescue many believers do not know God many believers do not know the Holy Spirit many believers do not know the voice of the Holy Spirit many believers do not know scripture many believers do not even understand the system of God many believers go to church I agree many believers take communion I agree many believers join in general church prayer I agree 
but very few believers have risen in spiritual orientation i'm not talking of men of god i'm talking of people who are healthy because of an atmosphere that is healthy the the kind of threat that the gate of hell is supposed to receive from the church has reduced grossly grossly we see the ease with which darkness looms around territories as though there are no believers there but the bible says you are the light of the world it didn't say you are the noise makers it didn't say you are the discussers you are the light you bring illumination you are a city that is set on a hill i think it's philippians chapter 2 when you read from verse 13 to 16 it starts by saying do everything without complaining or arguing i'm sure i'm right and then it says that he will be blameless um okay for god it that he may be blameless and harmless the sons of god without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation what is your mandate among whom ye shine as lights in the world next verse it says holding forth 16 holding forth the word of life holding forth the word of life not cunningly devised fables not the discussions of men are we together we have lost too many things in the body of christ we have lost power we have lost a voice no we, we have to we have been downgraded to a realm of scientology and carnality there must be a drastic upgrade otherwise something will be wrong we will not know the difference between spiritism and christianity or scientology and logic or some kinds of philosophical things are we blessed preservers of the ordinances of god in a territory mandated to make sure every generation tastes the reality of the life of God. For in your presence there is life everlasting I will reverence you I will I will reverence you, Lord, for in your presence there is life everlasting. I will reverence you, Lord. When John was caught up in the Isle of Patmos, John began to explain to us what he saw. And among many other things, John said he had a voice. And when he turned to see that voice, he saw seven lampstands. Listen carefully. And then John said, in the midst of the lampstand, there was one like the Son of Man. And he began to describe various attributes of him. And then it was God himself who began to give John that interpretation. He says that those lampstands represent the church, the ecclesia, God's body. The lampstands that Christ is found in the midst of them. That light that is also a city set on a hill that should never, never be confused. He says it is the church. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you the truth. Christianity is not in danger. Listen carefully. Church is not in danger, but the ordinances of the spirit that make men mighty is in danger. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The ordinances, the secrets of God that is a portion to transform men from ordinary people to make men of power and relevance is in danger. We scarcely understand the secrets of God. The pathway that any believer can follow and become a man of grace, a man of power, 
and relevance I want to share with you very briefly because I want us to pray six ways that the precepts of God can and should be preserved in a territory spirit the Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing fire like a volcano that's what I'm seeing in the spirit volcano in the spirit Shabaka to she goes kind of like a volcano please can another drummer sit down please let this gentleman go for somebody this man is Still seeing this fire inside, outside. I'm seeing it. It's like a volcano. When when you see God doing these kinds of things, it's, it's not show. It's not show. He's bringing witness. He's bringing witness to the spirit of man, because the word of God must have an agency for performance. He's he's working on people. I'm seeing like a volcano rising and exploding. Then the fire is dropping on people. This is what I see in the spirit. This is what I see in the spirit. Shabarakata sikata. Shabregade balakota variata kosi bradata. It's making us witnesses. Testaments. Listen, let me tell the truth. There are precepts of the spirit that cannot be lost. We must trust God. We must become true spiritual custodians of these things. Otherwise, a generation is in danger. The death of a man of God should not end the move of God. There are many men of God, we talk about them. They left with the secrets because there were no men to receive. They left with the secrets. Elisha died. Till today, there are dimensions that would have been seen. Gehazi was not positioned to receive. supernatural spiritual you must you must understand the realm of the spirit and sustain capacity to interact with that realm otherwise you will not do much I promise you that you must you must learn how to walk with God such that you become an envoy of his presence it's not just a call it's not just a unique call to a man it's not just a unique call to a man it is the product of consistently following a pathway. There is a pathway that produces that effect. It's not an exclusive preserve of particular men. There is a path you can follow that leaves the trace of God's presence. It's like a perfume. So every time you find expression, there is no man born of a woman that comes under the influence of that presence that will not be affected. That's the realm where doubt dies. That's the realm where all kinds of suspicion go away. You, you are not trying to show your anointed. Your presence always introduces a reality. You are showing men that you are standing in an interface between two realms. And for as long as you are there, you open them up to experiences that their current faith level cannot afford them. This is not just talk, talk, talk. All this empty talk, we keep mocking ourselves. The Bible says, for I did not come to you with the excellency of speech. It is not just about oratory. No. This is not grammar. This is the reality. The Bible, Paul calls it the mystery of godliness. That God can be embodied, domiciled 
in an individual who was born of flesh and blood but produced an effect that is strangely supernatural no man is born with the anointing no man is born with the anointing no man is born with spiritual power men follow pathways is an ancient path that has been lost there's too much talk too much grammar too much preaching too much listening to every man of God's message and picking out what will make you stand out on stage it, let me tell you the truth if we do not trust God to touch reality we will keep wasting our time educating ourselves do you know what what the average young preacher does hold on what the average young man not just your young, young believer who loves God does is he finds the tapes of five six seven eight men of God around the world and just puts them together and listens to them and there's nothing wrong with that but the purpose of listening to it is to try to synergize enough revelation to give him capacity to speak well so that he will not be ashamed that's a joke if that's what you think brings power and opens the heavens over a man I see is a is a big joke a big joke the realm of the spirit is not an educational classroom it's a place where men are made genuinely there there are there are there are capacities apportioned for people on grounds of working with the holy spirit only the holy spirit gives that ranking nobody you can pretend you have it many people pretend they have it but when the door settles down you hear the testimonies guy we have lost something serious we must trust god to be trusted with grace to preserve the ordinances of god otherwise some of the young believers coming up the only thing we can give them as a heritage is born again and then they get born again and they don't know what to do and it is this same confused us that have been ordained week in week out Everybody is a general overseer. Everybody is a president. Everybody is an apostle. Everybody is a prophet. Everybody is a pastor. Hilarious ordinations happening left, right, and center. And everybody is just holding the mic, and we are as confused as those who are trying to teach. I say this out of love for the body, but we must return. We are losing something. We are losing something very powerful. We are losing something. The ordinances. The precepts of the spirit there is a spiritual formula that men are subject to we are losing it in the name of ministry in the name of globalization in the name of making sure we expand no sir the average believer does not even know whether his prayer is answered or not the average believer does. the only thing we have done is that every time we pray in tongues for a long time and dissipate spiritual energy there is a consolation based on that energy so it is based on that pain we go through that we believe it is answered what, what sort of a, an, an education is that the average believer studies the bible to ease himself or herself from the guilt the personal guilt that comes from messages every sunday that you must be spiritual it is not a personal appetite it's not a search if if that guilt were taken away from us we would throw the bible in a heartbeat that's why we love using any other thing job or whatever it's only because we are free and everybody knows we are free so we can't say we are not serious so when there is a legitimate crown then we excuse it how the precepts of God are preserved in a territory our sensitivity largely very dull largely very dull any and everything happens around us and there is no acumen no perception we see and hear things we do not have strength and capacity to interpret so we become victims of anything and anybody who presses a little more than usual we we accept it that that person is being called into the ministry Number one, 
the first way listen carefully that the purposes of God are both established and preserved in a territory like our territory Zaria here for instance is prayer write it down prayer the first way the purposes of God are established upon a territory and also preserved is prayer warfare and intercession write it down a lost act in the body of Christ genuine warfare and intercession let me tell you something if we ever have a generation that laughs at warfare and intercession that's the generation that will not live to hand over to another I promise you I promise you our our spiritual ignorance is tilting us gradually to downplay the role of spiritual warfare and intercession over setting the atmospheres and the climates of territories to allow that territory host God brothers and sisters it takes prayer it takes genuine warfare and intercession for the heavens to be open over a territory enough for the purposes of God to be established warfare Ezekiel chapter 22 it's a long reading 23 to 31 but the verse of emphasis is verse 30 Ezekiel 22 please help us media Ezekiel chapter 22 and the word of the Lord came unto me saying long reading quickly please Just go to verse 30. Because at the, at the way we are going, we are going to waste too much time. And I sought for a man among them. Now this was God angry with a territory. That's why what I wanted us to read. But because of time, we'll just look at 30. God was angry with a territory. And was about to pour his indignation and his judgment. And God said, that mercy dimension of me was still there. But I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land for what for the land not for the church i'm talking about taking over territories preserving the precepts of god over a territory a man that will stand for the land so there are men that can stand for the land not just their churches that because of their presence and the business they do with God, certain things can happen to territories. They don't even know why it came and how it came. But a man stood for a land. That I should not destroy it, but I found... Did he say I did not find human beings? There were human beings. Many. But I found none. That man built in capacity and understanding. The ministry of prayer let me tell you this believe me hear me church of the Lord Jesus Christ everywhere here in any nation but more specifically in Zaria if we stop praying in Zaria because of some kind of spiritual laziness you will be shocked the way darkness will prevail over the city are we together the ministry of prayer is one of the foundational tenets that must be preserved in every generation. I don't care whether the believer is going to be a man of God or a civil servant or a politician. The ministry of prayer must be indoctrinated in every believer. He spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Not just need driven prayers alone. But we must graduate from realms of just praying, give me tea, give me bread, to taking over lands. That because of your presence in the territory, you subdue the controlling powers, the powers that mold the mindsets of people, the powers that are responsible for prevalent tragedies over a nation. That you come into a city and find accidents anyhow all kinds of things anyhow and you realize that you have been made a king and a priest over that territory and part of the ministry of your priesthood is advocacy 
that you go before God and you stand face to face with the controlling powers. That's what men did in the Bible. Abraham stood in for Sodom and Gomorrah. Are we together? Preserved the family of Lot. The wife chose the way she wanted. Joseph stood in, preserved certain things. Daniel stood in, preserved. Are you not men who preserve the purposes of God? Your generation. The ministry of warfare and prayer. The ministry of warfare. Ephesians chapter 6. When we read from verse 10 to 19, the Bible tells us, listen carefully. The Bible tells us that um, we should be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Then it says we should put the full armor of God. Are we together? Then it says how that we, we do not war against principalities and powers, but against um, rulers and flesh and blood, but principalities and powers and all of that. It begins to tell us that in every territory, these demonic structures exist. Hold on. Let me preach to educated people. You know, sometimes because we have gone to school, because we are rich, small money, small job, we... Um, and sometimes innocently and truthfully I hear preachers downplay the presence of controlling powers over cities simply because at the present they are doing well let me tell you something Satan is many things a fool is not one of them are you hearing what I'm saying? Satan is defeated Satan is old Satan is several things but a fool is not one of them he has the advantage of age Time. He has studied mankind. Different species of people have lived upon this earth. He has had an advantage of one to one experience. Satan has existed before several dispensations, before Adam's dispensation that brought us into the sea. Every territory has controlling powers. Every territory has controlling powers. If you see the purposes of God prevailing in that territory, brothers and sisters, it's not because the controlling powers are not there. An agency in the spirit, a system has been lifted in the heaven that has clamped down the activities of darkness enough to allow the purposes of God find expression. That's why I said if we stop praying, or if we concentrate on childish immature prayer lord give me tea tomorrow again oh god i forgot to ask for bread yesterday there is a place where you ask for your needs but notice how jesus taught us to pray our father who art in heaven we reverence you after reverencing him the next thing is your agenda your kingdom come your kingdom come your kingdom come upon a land upon a territory listen the concept of prayer chains, the concept of prayer groups, the concept of prayer cells in territories must never end. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Yes. Now, the, the, the challenge with many people is that the moment people start praying, carnality comes in and they are looking who is the leader among these three people. What is the name of this ministry of four of us? I don't know who taught us that prayer groups, prayer cells, prayer chains, there should be some structure of leadership. But, you know, we have this mentality and, and especially some of us who are coming up are mentoring this wrong thing from some of us men of God. The moment people start praying, everybody is obsessed about who is the leader, who has the protocol to follow him. If, if we do like that, then the devil is going to destroy us. In every city and territory in Zaria there should be prayer portals that's how the kingdom works I'm a good student of revivals that's how it should work in Samaru there should be units of men and women praying high in Dogo there should be people there has to be representations of the kingdom sending an incense of prayer on a daily basis that's why I thank God for all the groups scattered around. And notice that's what Satan hates. The moment there are people praying, some kinds of agitation must arise from anywhere. Preserve us of the ordinances of God. Gone are the days where churches start as prayer groups. 
Now churches start as intentional, organized platforms for the enjoyment of the man of God. Are we together? That before a man of God starts ministry, he has sewn his clothes for one year. Are we together? The offering basket has been made. Tight envelope is, in, is, is intact. What is it? We, we better be careful. This joke that we keep joking with ourselves. Every correct ministry starts as same. It doesn't. Let me tell you, most men of God that are being used mightily by God today, ask them, their intention was never ministry. They were men who made themselves available. When God called them, they went back and cried and said, God, can you use somebody else? God will say, you are the person. You can choose to say no, but I'm not using any other person. You are the one I will use. But now you see the appetite with which we rush into this thing. And the devil doesn't, he, he doesn't stop us because there's, whether we are in it or outside, it's, there's, it makes no difference to him. We are still equally ignorant. Prayer. That's how this ministry started. Prayer. Every day, fire on the altar. And I'm not talking of the kind of prayer that is for one hour and you talk for 60 minutes. And you say, let's, let's thank God. That's Bible study. Prayer should be an intense time of engaging in the spirit. Only to be interrupted shortly to establish a few things. Strengthen the understandings of the people. The fire continues. This is the kind of prayer that can host heaven in eternity. Let me be honest with you. Many territories have a lot of repentance to do. Many families have a lot of repentance to do. The prayer lives of many people are under attack. When the devil finds out that there's no hope of you backsliding in prayer, he tells your prayer to become a selfish one. So you are praying for hours, but you are making minimal, minimal spiritual progress. I insist, prayer chains, prayer groups, there are many of you here, that the burden is in your hand. It's not carnality. And it is not ministry either. When you, let me teach you something. Every time you get to a new land, before you get accommodation, find somewhere where you can pray. Scan around the back of one tree. Shout and hear whether it disturbs anybody. If that's good, dedicate it as an altar to start with. Don't go around and say, where can I get a hotel and all this rubbish? No. Find a place to pray. Somebody will join you. Another person will join you. The devil is in trouble. Once there are up to two people or three that can agree to be praying. Apostle, but what is the name of the ministry? It's not, it doesn't have a name. The ministry is traveling in the spirit until the purposes of God are portioned for that territory. So it doesn't matter where you are. The assignment is the same. If you leave Zaria for a three-week break and you are in Kogi for that three-week Every demon and devil in Kogi State will feel the fire when you return. It doesn't matter. Someone else too is returning there. So there's fire everywhere. Say everywhere. But now you find out that some places are as cold as ice, whereas some other places are on fire. Do you know, whenever you travel for a ministry, to a, to a ministry, the purpose is not just to go there to watch a superstar. The purpose is to carry it like a coal. You go and fetch some of it. Are we together? That's why when I see people come from other places, I like laying my hands on them. It's not just for showmanship. So you carry something. The goal is to take it back to your territory. The same way we do in the physical. When they want to teach an organization certain things and they can't sponsor all of them, what do they do? They pick one man. Is that true? Or a few people. Send them abroad for the training. When they return back, they teach the people. Not shine with it not shine with it this is where we are missing it train the people one of the biggest killers in ministry is title and that sense of control over men if we don't repent out of it you know i look at people and there is such an obsession to be the leader okay this group is the name is is, is, is um, salvation power intercessory group and I'm the one, I'm the, 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 I'm the chief uh, uh, coordinator of it. That means I'm the one who prays more and all these ones are my children. 
you start praying in two months everybody that comes here is your child including people like our mother here that came to all, all this this poor self-esteem that we have transferred into our prayer lives and ministries this title and an obsession for platforms is what is killing the move of God in many territories do you know there are people as students years ago there are people who had different prayer groups when when all of them were finishing they just left they've gone on other places doing great things but most of us you pray for two days and then the next thing you carry a piece of paper who is really the secretary among these five people we need to define it because the other day i didn't tell anybody to lead prayer and this other lady started leading. when did she join this thing before and you see we, we start politicizing it are you not from madam me too i'm from Adam. that one came i don't say from lagos he said we don't want to bring all these kind of things and we kill the move of god with very frivolous childish things another thing that kills prayer is love no, not love relationship hello I keep saying it there are people till today they have no business loving anybody please hear what I'm saying all this thing of coming to the house of God for one month and you're already eyeing every sister every brother you are in love no sir this is not how we train people we train people to look for God first press into God have a testament a, a track record then you can love but now everybody is, is just you, you come in two days you are praying people are closing their eyes praying and what you are doing is you are looking out for for who it is to marry i'm not saying god cannot use those platforms in fact god should use them are we together however your heart if the reason why you are in several prayer groups is to find a wife or find a husband you need to re-engineer and renew your mind and repent and ask for forgiveness and concentrate on the major reason why you are there first most people who become mightily used by god never go there to marry they go there to seek god they pray with all their heart and serve and one day while they are praying god will tell them you see this 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 lady it's even God that will tell them, my son, look, you have been serving me sincerely. This, this one that you are serving, you need a helper. I said, God, I can continue. God, it's me that I say you need a helper. But now, we are the ones bombarding the gate of heaven. A prayer request full of, oh God, won't I marry? And God, what have you done for me? You have not done anything. Nobody has been saved as a result. It's a scam to come to the house of God. You are not contributing anything. And the next thing you want to take and and usually is god's best we want to take oh come on please are we blessed let me be honest with you church of the lord jesus christ let's return to the place of seeking god sincerely and passionately or coming to the house of god and everybody is checking what did this one this prayer group ah i like these suits that this one is wearing i know father your kingdom come in this territory there is darkness lord we just noticed that 11 people died in nine months that means there is a spirit passing through that territory unhindered and all of a sudden one faithful day that spirit will hear a sound from the earth as it's moving to high in dogo someone is taking it from there let me tell you how you drive spirits you make the heavens unconducive don't laugh at what I'm telling you I'm teaching you how this thing works because they will always leave where there is fire and settle down and wait for a backsliding territory and then return back this is how many of those we admire today that's how they were raised they were never a means here asking those of you who were there when Koinonia when he and I started when you got born again in two weeks it will be as if you have spent one year in christ because there was fire everywhere there still is but because we're a lot more organized now it is very difficult when people got there were people who would get born again filled with the holy spirit from day two they start prophesying and even with the prophesying they are not going anywhere because they are still demons to get out of there as they finish prophesying they go and humble themselves and sit down and learn but now someone gets born again after one month because of the gift of the spirit 
He prophesies, she prophesies the next thing. They start speaking to people. They speak mistakes into the lives of people because they are seen correctly, but the dynamics of interpreting spiritual things is not there. And before you will now learn and grow, you have misled several people. Gift is not maturity. You need to stay with God. No matter how you rush, you must stay. That fire, that fire is the maker of men. Anybody that dodges fire, don't trust him. Don't trust him. You must be refined as of gold. Our desires and appetites must be put genuinely to seek God. Say amen. amen. Prayer. I'm encouraging you. I'm encouraging the church in Zaria. I'm encouraging the church everywhere. There must be prayer units. Most ministries do it. But many ministries, what, what they do is not really prayer unit. It's just maybe home sales, which is wonderful. I, I, I don't have a problem with it. Do you know why we will not do it as Koinonia? Because you are an extension of the ministry. The goal is not Joshua Selman in every home. The goal is the kingdom, the power, the glory of God. Your house can become an altar. Your small area can become an altar. Two of you, three of you can begin to pray. It doesn't matter that God started with you. It doesn't need to have a name. The name is prayer. Seven to nine. Five to six in the morning. Nine to ten. Every day or two days in a week or three days in a week. You do this and see what begins to happen. Let me tell you what begins to happen. The moment you pray, there will first be silence. One month, two months, you will start seeing physical agitations. The demons that are resident in men will start reacting. Something is happening in the realm of the spirit. Your own loved ones will start fighting you for reasons you cannot explain. And say, look, um, you are becoming proud. And you say, no, no, sir, I'm not becoming You are becoming proud. The moment they say that, remember spiritual intelligence, you know it's not the individual. You, you respect the body, but go back in the spirit and say, Satan, I'm still there. I know it's you. Jesus looked at Peter and said, Satan, get thee behind you. And you go and continue. And then one day, let me tell you how God will announce that he has come to that territory. A spectacular move of God will happen. One day you will see people in a family. And they are just sitting down watching football. And the power of God breaks out in that house. Breaks out in a house where they hate the Holy Spirit. Guess who the first to be filled with the Holy Ghost will be? The Father himself. Shakata, bakata. And you are wondering, my father? My father? Yes, your father. This controversial person who is so scientific. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He's the one God. Your prayer. The Holy Spirit has been eyeing him. And on that day. We have missed it. There are many territories that are cold. So the only way people can get some fire. Is when they rush and converge in particular places. The place of convergence is important. But the place of convergence should not be a remedy for lack of fire where you are. It should be a place to come and receive a greater fanning. Can you make a commitment in one minute? That you will become an extension of the fire of God in your territory. Pray. Pray in one minute. Cast away lukewarmness. Some of us, our lives are under attack. We are seeing it, but we do not care. The grace for prayer zero. Every and anybody is distracting your prayer life. I'm busy, I'm busy. A deception by the pit of hell. Lord, in the staff quarters, Find a space through me. Lord, in prison, we represent an extension of that altar of prayer. Hallelujah.
listen let your prayer be focused on impact not titles impact not titles if you are here roaming around looking for people to start going to your small church lock it down and go and start praying alone yes sir yes sir don't invite anybody let them come and meet you praying and you are praying and God is watching you my beloved son no carpet no canopy no mic no suit no nothing but a genuine desire to seek him and God is saying I, I am watching listen all this all this running around am I a prophet or am I apostle is nonsense it is the place of prayer and work. there is nobody that starts ministry and starts working with God knowing who he is even if God tells you it will not look like that are you hearing what I'm saying all this I am apostle this just wait and see it will happen you are joking nothing will happen it is in the place of prayer as that fire refines you it starts drawing you to become something and everybody starts saying this is the training of a prophet even you, you may mistake yourself for an evangelist because the only thing you did was crusade. But then it's eventually, as it's building you, you know that no, this training is not an evangelist training. <laughs> Why is this unusual? <laughs> there are people who think they are called in, they are, some of you here seated, you are born prophets with the office of a prophet, but you have not seen one vision. Because it's not about the vision. Keep praying. Just continue. Just continue. You will argue with anybody and say, No, sir, I'm not a prophet. Me, I, I know I'm a pastor because I'm a good teacher. You will find out that teaching is not even part of it. Just keep praying. The refiner's fire comes through that prayer. When your heart is being purged, are we together now? Flesh is being taken away. One day, you will begin to pray. And all of a sudden, you will find out that you will prophesy like Saul from morning till night and step into a strange dimension. Many people who are calling themselves many offices take it from me, they are wrong. They don't know. It is only the place of the dealing of the spirit that makes you, you say you are a pastor, who told you? Just because someone prophesied, he saw in part and he said so, he may be right, but he may not be it. No, don't say just because you saw a ring, you saw a hand. You say, I'm a prophet, I'm a prophetess, I'm an apostle. No, sir, don't flatter yourself. Let the place of prayer incubate you. When you come out fully, the name that you are will be shown. Not just by titles, results, results. Results will show who you are. If you're a prophet, don't tell us. Let the results show it. Show us the eye of the spirit you received in the place of prayer. Show us the acumen, the ability to perceive realities. That's what makes a prophet. Show us the ability to bring things down from the realm of the spirit. Don't come and talk jargons and waste our time. Show us the performance that comes based on the word of God. Show us the throne in heaven that backs that office. Don't say I'm an apostle. Show us the throne that backs you. Show us the keys of the territory that was given to you. We go around bragging, calling ourselves names, flattering ourselves and deceiving people and being deceived ourselves. Pray in one minute, Lord, a restoration of the grace for warfare and intercession. Praying over a land. Please pray. Please pray. Please pray. Restore me back, oh God, to the ordinances of the fathers. Restore me back. Restore me back. Restore me back. Restore me back. The ordinances that help men to walk with God.
praise the Lord. I once saw a man of God that I knew years ago. When I shook that man, as soon as I shook him, tears filled my eyes. I was almost asking him, where did your fire go to? What happened to you? What made you cold like this? Who deceived you? What did you start listening to? Where did you go? Which association did you join? Restore my fire. Lift your voice and pray. Cry it from your spirit. Restore my fire. Shakata kata. Leketo satos kapriata. Restore my fire. Restore it, O God. The destiny of a territory is at stake. The destiny of a territory is at stake. Makato kata kata kata. Sheketekete. This is not the issue of being a man of God. This is not the issue of being in ministry. Preserve us of the ordinances of the spirit. Daily prayers, daily prayers, daily prayers, daily prayers, every day, daily prayers, every day, daily prayers, every day, daily prayers, every day, daily prayers, without fail.
There are ladies that don't pray. Don't pray. Fashion is, is eating us up. I believe in fashion, look good, but it's complete nonsense if you don't pray. Can we pray in the spirit just for one minute? Just, just to allow the Holy Spirit to bring this. There are gentlemen that don't pray. We are overconscious of ourselves. No, sir. Teach your children to pray. Teach your children to pray. Hallelujah. Please sit down. Prayer. Preserve prayer in every territory. Preserve it in your house. Preserve it in your life. Preserve it everywhere. Don't let it go. No matter who laughs at you, no matter how Western, those of you listening from other nations of the world, restore prayers back to your homes. Restore prayer back to your churches. Whether you are in America, whether you are in London, it doesn't matter where. Restore prayer back. Prayer has equal value everywhere. Whether you are rich or poor, your personal comfort has nothing to do with your prayer life. Number two. How are the ordinances of God advanced and preserved? A regular convergence of believers within, within that territory. The second way that the ordinances of God are not only transferred but preserved is that there must be a regular convergence of believers within that territory to be trained, equipped, empowered. There is no territory that can preserve a spiritual heritage when there is no platform for a regular convergence of believers. Be it a regular church service, be it a midweek service, be it different interdenominational programs, it doesn't matter. There has to be a regular convergence. There must be a platform where the believers within that territory keep in touch. They are trained. They are equipped. They are empowered. Then they also receive the blueprint of God's current emphasis. It's one of the highest advantage of coming together. When believers come together, the whole territory can hear what God is doing now. Don't assume that because God moved in a particular way yesterday, that's what he's still doing today. When a territory dissociates itself from Psalms 133, a convergence for the purpose of being equipped, it is for this reason that God anointed some. He gave unto some apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers for the equipping of those people within that territory. So what, what happens here every week is the will of God. A convergence of men and women. Are you seeing why when people begin to say it's not the issue of crowd, there, there is a joke. Are the people cheers? The more the people within a territory that can converge to hear the precepts of God, provided the dispensers of that truth are in touch with God, is an advantage in the multitude of people is a king's honor. The king there is not the man of God. The king there is the king of kings. In the multitude of people within a territory, don't have a territory of 5 million people. And the largest church in that territory is 300 people. And you say it doesn't matter. What else matters? Why didn't Jesus die for 12 people? And say 12 people receive my salvation. 
than any other person who is interested. No, he died for the whole world. Don't get into that mistake of resenting crowds. Just because there are people or there may be ministries that have crowds and maybe the men of God and the women of God may not be well positioned to supply them the kind of spiritual feeding does not mean that God is against crowd. When you reject it, it looks like you are being spiritual. But that's been carnal. Anybody that knows God must love people. Acts chapter 2 from verse 42 to 47 they continued Acts 2 and they continued look at me who are the day the community of believers within that territory they continued steadfastly consistently unbendingly in the rain in the sunshine convenient or not convenient the sad reality is that most people in the body of Christ have been indoctrinated that only when things become convenient for you there are people who come to church and now I believe in excellence but just a little hit somewhere they said I'm too I mean I'm I'm, I'm too I'm too uh, 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 steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and fellowship in breaking of bread and in prayers we are reading down to 47 and fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles and all that believed were together and had all things in common and they sold their possession and their goods and parted them etc etc 46 and they continuing daily not even weekly the church of old they continued daily with one accord in the temple and breaking of bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart verse 47 praising God and having favor with all the people and what did God do who is the person who brings a crowd a man of God please get away from all that mistake of thinking men of God are using oratory you can invite animals by gimmicks not men men are not stupid a crowd of people cannot be a crowd of idiots there are people who are sensible and went to school when you see crowds god brought them don't get into that thing of saying people are just gathering just for entertainment no sir no sir there may be one of two exceptions but you don't generalize there are places god is doing mighty things this place is one of them the bible says and the lord added to the church how many daily such as should be saved so the multitudes of people that come are people sent by God to find salvation there must be a regular convergence when Satan wants to frustrate the purposes of God in a territory he starts bringing people and policies that try to frustrate the gathering of the brethren are you seeing that now that's why things like a crisis is very bad because among other things it puts fear in people and causes men to not be able to come together and to learn thank God for platforms technology has afforded greater opportunities today most ministries and most groups and platforms have social media presence for all those who are part of what God is doing in that ministry to connect and follow. There are all kinds of opportunities for growth. Number three. How is the kingdom advanced in a territory? How are the ordinances of God preserved in a territory? Ready? An open display of real miracles, signs and wonders beyond the church walls let me tell you how god is institutionalized in a territory an open display not a private quiet secret doubtful manifestation of his power an open display of real genuine miracles signs 
wonders that are beyond the church wall out of all the miracles jesus performed please write it and look up out of all the miracles jesus performed less than one percent of them was done in the church is that true he was strolling one day and then he saw a dead body they were going out a woman was crying had lost her son had lost her husband and he said what's going on here and he said this woman is about to leave he stopped them there and then and brought the son back to life do you know that when a miracle happens and it is not known it doesn't bring God glory the glory God receives is in the announcing of what he has done I know most times people think it's an announcing of a powerful man of God our mother came here and shared testimony our brother here came and shared testimony of someone who has come back to life do you know what that does to you it strengthens your faith and then when the miracle happens in your presence it is beyond doubt that's why listen listen if you're a man of God here you must trust God for grace for instant performance of the word. instant performance it is wonderful to go and come back two weeks with results but there is nothing more convincing than the optical eyes of a doubter watching God in action you saw it before during and after when Jesus finished declaring his his um, call in Luke chapter 4 he told the guy with the withered hand he said for starters to prove to you the hand of God is upon me Mr. Man stretch your hand when he stretched his hand that was beyond doubt the highest that can happen to you is you will be criticized and hated but I assure you God will be glorified an open display why do we need an open display of miracles within territories it creates convictions not just in the heart of church members in the heart of the community many communities do not believe in God because they have not seen him coming in an open display the day God anoints you and you stand and speak over a territory and say God revealed to me that in in five months they are going to tar this road and people laugh at you and say stupid pastor if you want cheap publicity go on air and all of a sudden a rich man comes within that territory and tars that road in five months you don't need to tell them God has done it the next time they see you that convicting power the day you now speak and say I saw death in this community they will not laugh at you again they do not take our word serious do you know why bloggers and journalists write everything about men of God because there has not been an open display of the efficacy of the power and the grace of God something that defies principalities and signs and wonders most of this open display is largely done in the south that's why there are hardly our fathers of faith there the, the kind of crowd that comes for their meetings the miracles that happen you will see people sitting on the street selling akara selling pap and watching people rise up from wheelchairs now let me tell you it does not matter how hardened you are if you see a real miracle you must go back and think about it you can choose to argue but the truth still remains the truth what has happened in your family to shut the mouth of those who are doubting those who have laughed at you and said koinonia every time you must trust god for an open display everybody say an open display that one day you step into the parlor and all of a sudden someone that is to go for surgery maybe your loved ones just because you stepped in there while they are busy criticizing a man of god on tv you look and say daddy the lord just said i should tell you that this cancer is gone and he laughs hey, young boys i was with you i was i remember serving god in boys brigade when i was growing up while they are talking all that drama there is instant miracle and he touches his stomach he will first quietly go to the room and lock the door and say no no what is happening and within a short time the lord is glorified let me tell you what they'll start calling you uh where is prophetess pastor 
evangelist were about to pray is God saying anything that's a sign that God is working God is working something powerful in this time God is raising mighty men in our days. He won't stop, he won't stop till his church looks like him. He won't stop, no, he won't stop till my life looks like him. Acts chapter 19. Please quickly. Acts chapter 19. Brothers and sisters, we need a restoration of the anointing in the body of Christ. This anointing thing is not for showmanship. The anointing is a silencer of doubters. Charles and Francis Hunter of blessed memory would always say that one miracle is worth a thousand words. Our noise is too much. We need a performance of strange and extreme dimensions of the operation of the spirit that stretches people's unbelief until they no longer have a chance to disbelieve God. Acts chapter 19, verse 11. 11. And God wrought what kind of miracles? There are ordinary miracles. They are supernatural in themselves. But they are special miracles. By the hands of Joshua Selman. Verse 12. So that from his body. This is a very personal scripture for me. So that from his body we are brought to the sick handkerchiefs and aprons today we just use it out of showmanship a man of god just says hey, what did you say is wrong with you sir darkness is all over our house so bring this handkerchief i hold it we spit on it we rub it on our face people carry it back home like a charm one year after that handkerchief arrived home nothing happened it's a sign that there's no power period obed edom and the ark of God was taken to his house in 90 days. How many days? 90 solid days. It's true that I know that some miracles can take time. But something should start working after some time. Are we together? If I lay hands on you to be delivered. And after two weeks you come back one month. Nothing has happened. That means something is wrong. Not with you, with me. I should go back for a retreat. And say, Lord, these hands. Otherwise, a day will come, the hands will just look like tissue paper. As it's coming on your head, you believe that nothing is happening. Keep these hands anointed, oh God. Keep these hands anointed. Keep these hands anointed. That's a good prayer to pray for yourself. Keep these hands anointed. May I never stand upon the stage and waste the time of God's people. May I never lay hands on someone or shake someone and touch someone and his life doesn't change. This is not about showmanship. When your hands are empty, you are not in ministry. Let me tell you, you are just, you are just a, no. Abba. Believe what I'm saying. Keep these hands. Preserve it. Preserve your grace. Preserve the mystery of the oil you have put upon these hands. He said, God brought mighty miracles. Give it to us again, please. By the hands of Paul. What is happening through your hands? Nothing. 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 You don't have to be in church. What is happening through your hands? What happens to my destiny if I shake you? You claim that God lives in you. Brothers and sisters, what has happened to your hands? Nothing. Oh, let me agree with you. And we hold people. While we are praying, their eyes are opening. We are the only ones who close our eyes. Because they don't believe in us. They know that that prayer is just nonsense. In Jesus' name, amen. They say, thank you, sir. And they go back and say, sorry, can I see this man of God? Because that's the real person they know who solve their problems. I want you to look at your hands and pray over it in one minute. And say, Lord, put something upon this hand. Put an anointing upon this hand that can represent your purposes. It's not a carnal prayer. I want you to sincerely pray. Shake it like a source of a cup here. Put an anointing upon my hands, oh God. There are too many sick people in my environment. Look at the brother that shared his testimony. He used his hand to hold the phone. And with a single call, a dead body came back from the realm of the spirit to the physical. Place an anointing on my hand. Place an anointing on my hand. 
Hallelujah. He said, and the disease departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. 13. And certain of the vagabond Jews, copycats, exorcists, they took it upon themselves, upon them which had an evil spirit. You know the name of the Lord saying, we adjure you. They thought it's just by, by big manism or wearing nice clothes. And one day, they saw someone who was heavily under the influence of demon spirits. Are we together now? We are reading to verse 20. And then 14 says, And there were seven sons of one skiva, a Jew and a chief of the priest, which did so. 15. And the evil spirit answered them. That's the side effect of lack of true power. It's not that the devil is trying to confess. This is not confession. This is a question. You, are, you, are, you, you stupid man of God. You think everybody is faking it. He called those who are real. Known by the realm of the spirit. Not by members. Jesus I know. Paul I know. Who are you? Hi. Who are you? When a demon spirit asks you who are you? Is that a nice thing? From the realm of the spirit. They are watching you every day. You have one suit. You went for a program. They kept water in front of your table. They did a, a good publicity. And they said, now it's time for the man of God, a man of strange anointing. And you hold the mic. And you are talking jargons and someone there is looking at you. And all of a sudden, the demon spirit with the person heavily possessed just does his hand like that and you collapse on the stage and stand up and say sorry I don't know what happened my mind is ah no there's an army rising up there's an army rising up there's an army verse 16 we are reading to 20 and the man in whom the evil spirit was did what leapt on them and overcame them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded the consequence of approaching the power of darkness and the gates of hell when you have not proved that your fire is real there are many arrogant people in the body of Christ. Listen to me. Let me give you a very true secret. The power of God is unlimited, but its operation in the body of believers depends on many factors, which includes their level of spiritual growth. You must have the courage to discern what is your level spiritually. There are many arrogant people. They will do anything. You are seeing some level of acute darkness that does not just require being anointed, but a comprehension of deep spiritual mysteries to set the people free. You just get up by yourself, carry a bottle of oil, and travel to one state that has 200 years of track record of acute witchcraft. I'm, I'm, I'm in Christ. And you go there. As soon as you get there, you start pouring oil around the compound. Nobody talks to you. You just find out that that night, as you are sleeping, the next day, you get up and find yourself in the hospital. What happens? They say that's how the spirits work. They don't talk to people. The next thing you just, whatever happens to you is their answer. Listen, it's not everything you see that is, that is all that there is. When you see a man of God moving in the anointing, it's only what you can see with your physical eyes you think is happening. But there are interplay of spiritual laws. A man can lay hands on someone's head and lay hands on his shoulder. And you just think that it was just for the anointing to go anywhere. When that man, if he's spiritual, if he explains to you the dynamics of what he has done. Are we together? 
It's not all about just touching his head and his shoulder or whatever. No. That's why we must grow. But as we grow, we must trust God to know certain realities that require a higher level of anointing and insight. There are certain levels of spiritual breakthrough that no matter how an individual is anointed, one man cannot bring that level of breakthrough. It will take the corporate body to bring it. We do not know. And one man will be trying to pull down something that is bigger than him. So we must have that. That's just a lesson for us to learn. Let's read down, please, quickly. Media, don't take it away. Just leave it there so that we'll hurry up, please. Help us. And this was known to all the community. Are you seeing now? Something unpleasant now is known to all the community. Jews and Greeks also dwelling at Ephesus. And fear came upon them. And the name of the Lord was magnified. They saw the apostles healing the sick. And I'm sure that they said, what is there? What is there? Miracles. Anybody can heal. The sons of Sceva went to try it. When the demons beat them, it was an endorsement that this anointing is not common everywhere. And the Bible says that the people glorified God. And then verse 18 says, and many that believed did what as a result? They came and confessed and showed their deeds. 19, we are reading to 20. Many of them which also used curious acts. That means there were people who were smuggling magic books and using it, it was working small by small. But when certain men came into that city, they got everyone packing out, including magicians. Do you think if that book did not do something for them, wouldn't they have thrown it since? They saw something superior and powerful. And the Bible says they brought their books together and burned them before who? A community. Imagine a popular herbalist in Bromo or somewhere, maybe Zaria City, bringing his magic book here and standing before everybody and saying, I was sent to go and kill one koinonia lady. And just because I saw her cat walking, I thought it was all about the reform. When I touched fire, I got a reply and a response that I've never seen for 30 years of herbal practice. This is what happened there. And they counted the price of them and they found it 50,000 pieces of silver, 20 popular scripture. So mightily grew the word of God. Why? Because of a public display of miracles, signs and wonders. We need the supernatural. We need to cry for the anointing. We need a restoration of authentic spiritual power to back our churches and to back our lives. Man of God, don't preach without power. It's not about saying, there's somebody here, the power of God will throw you. That's not what we are talking about. That, that's not power. We are talking of results. Results. Undeniable results. Like some of you are seated here now, you are coming for the first time. You will not need to tell people you came for Koinonia. You will just go back and all of a sudden you find out that something has shifted. You open your Bible. A true encounter is not known at the moment of the encounter. It's until the experience leaves and then the person just finds out that something has happened strangely. Let me give us one more. There are six but I'll just stop at number four so that we pray. Number one is prayer. Number two is a regular convergence of believers within that territory. Number three, an open display of miracles, signs, and wonders beyond the church walls. Number four, intentional mentorship of younger believers and ministers. The fourth way, the ordinances of God are preserved in a territory is through an intentional mentorship of younger believers and ministers. This is a serious one. Let me tell you this. Failure to mentor the younger believers that are rising will produce a generation that will forget God. Not just forget his ordinances, but forget God. I'm watching that and I'm throwing this as a challenge to the body of Christ. And even the church in Zaria. Who 
are the apostolic and the prophetic voices mentoring our young ones in primary school now everybody has left them and we're focusing on ministry who are the people mentoring those in secondary school thank god for fcs thank god for um, um cem thank god for all of these people but there are some of you here you need to go back and begin to make sure that young people like shade's child here that by the time they are growing they are not only receiving education alone there must be an intentional mentorship of younger people most people is the mistake of the american church they left their children so you will see a mother who was an old baptist woman served god all her life but you will find out that her child is a tout and a hooligan somewhere who does not love god we must concentrate right now most people from the ages of 17 downwards all they are obsessed about is phones android devices ps4 i don't have a problem with it but their entire obsession oh what os are you using you hear that that's all they think about oh i'm using this ps4 there's this they need fire oh they need they are not too young they need serious fire i'm not against that it's the reality that comes with that age range but we must be able to guide people that's why i love it when you see our children come here for koinonia i know that many of you say ah, are they too young to understand as occultists whether the children are too young to understand you see a small child tie something like a napkin and do it like this and you turn upside down and fall down that's the child of a herbalist and they tell you ah that guy is one of the most senior person in this tribe that small boy you are saying that is my son is your son in the physical in the realm of the spirit is something else an ancient spirit is seated on that small child there is no child that is too small to receive spiritual things they may be too small to articulate it but their spirit is healthy enough to receive it second timothy chapter 2 verse 2 second timothy and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses he said the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others too a superstar lifestyle is not god's plan god's plan is not superstar apostle joshua selman god's plan is apostle joshua selman committed by grace certain precepts and your assignment is to open up your heart and pour it to people so that they also will do so may god forbid that the day will come in zaria when the average young man does not know god say amen may god forbid that in zaria during a church service we will have young people hanging around sagging their jeans and dancing around and toasting themselves instead of praying and crying to the god who can change any man's destiny may god forbid that is not your child that will refuse to know god listen 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 our children must love god and they must love god genuinely somebody is indoctrinating a generation to hate god i want you to beware there is a secret indoctrination of a generation ages 5 to 15 must be preserved those of you here that God is calling you into children ministry, receive an anointing for it. It's not all about giving children biscuits and sweets. Let them cram the memory verses. That's how we started. Children now don't know any memory verse again. You ask them, John 3.16, they are twisting their tongues and talking nonsense. Teach them. Don't say it's not useful. Let them know. When we were being raised, they taught godly songs now in most schools children cannot have a clean song that does not have explicit contents a little child is singing a song that even as an adult you look at him and say no this should not be there must be restoration of godliness cem may god anoint you more and revive you more please fcs may god anoint you and revive you more individual children ministry groups may god anoint you and revive you more because if you yourself are not revived what will you teach the children
bad things bad things that's what our children learn now things that are more than their age and we say it does not matter it matters you have children in your house who are too young to watch certain things don't let them watch it don't let them watch it there are times you need to regulate i'm not i'm not trying to be harsh but there are times you need to regulate all this this a child of seven years watching television from morning till night switching from one music channel to the other hearing things and receiving them in the spirit and authorizing demon spirits to come and destroy them we must preserve godliness say amen You don't like what I'm saying. I don't plan to stop at all. We must say it again and again. Some of you, God gave you instructions before you became popular to visit secondary schools and primary schools, not with the name of any ministry and bless them. But now that you have become Apostle Joshua Selman, you have become Madame madam whatever businesswoman or whatever you have stopped go back repent and go back we have this mentality that when we are ministering to children it's a sign that we ourselves are children it's the society that makes it so in a bit to show that we are matured we leave the children and say look let's start talking to married men jesus said let the little children come to who come to me he says and do not forbid them for for such is the kingdom of heaven please return back to children ministry in the name of jesus christ when a child looks at you and does like this to you don't smile at the child and rub the head carry the hand and spank it and say no you don't do like this you greet people are we together most of us watch children do all kinds of things a visitor just comes and the child comes and stands in front of him and slaps the visitor and is laughing and you are watching is that good Bible says foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but a rod of correction, not discussion. You don't have to be hostile on children. A little spank with two fingers, one, two, and then tell them what they did that was wrong. Don't just leave them cry. This is what you did. Mommy does not like it. Daddy does not like it. For that reason, one, two, Jesus too does not like it. In include Jesus. Let them learn. And know that it's not just you alone. preserve us of the ordinances of the kingdom there's this song that says our generation shall praise your name our generation shall praise your name That for as long as I'm alive, my generation must know God. It's a covenant I've entered with myself. There's no going back. There's no discussion. There's no hope of going back. To go back is to die in life and in death. It's a vow and a covenant I've made with myself and everything around my life. It is to serve Him forever and to introduce Him to a generation. God is waking us up stop playing games don't wait until the day you have a cathedral of five thousand people you can start now some of you you are the first one you are the only one who knows god in your house your your fourth born can look at you and say stupid girl that's a joke you need to cast out that demon out of their head and organize a standard bible study using a koinonia message and tell them sit down you are 10 years older than him is insulting you Beat that devil out of that head and keep that child disciplined. The day I give birth to a child who insults me, that that day, I'm not going to concentrate on the child. The spirit that could enter my roof through that child, a child of maybe it's a child of two, three years, nine, ten years. No, see. Am I against being, am I, am I for being harsh? No. I'm a compassionate person. 
but please brothers marry though about to marry never over pamper children let them know discipline is part of love because most of our children will be born in millionaire families you must discipline them Don't let spoiled children come up and become a nuisance to society pray they say no I, the church is hot please daddy can you give me the car to the jeep no son you are sitting down here if me your father the owner of the jeep the jeep is sitting down you must sit down and pray let's go back to our primary schools I'm serious I'm rounding up let's go back to our secondary schools gone are the days when teachers including Christian schools I don't know what is Christian about the school if they don't pray you have a Christian school and you openly said it's a Christian school and at the beginning of the class they don't pray what, what is what is the Christian about it the teacher himself cannot pray you never see a fasting program organized in the school nobody cares while they are praying the teacher who is a young guy somewhere who is not even born again wait and let koinonia start her schools oh yes oh yes let koinonia start her schools and you will see there's nothing like i'm busy who will supervise it it's a mandate don't do that i'm busy man of god and allow the devil kill your ministry sit down open your eyes and see what is happening this teacher's life is questionable He's destroying the life of the student. Call him to the office. Sir, we love you and we don't mean to embarrass you, but we notice that um, it seems you have not been uh, a very good influence over our children. Could there be a problem? Would you need some counsel? Nobody should talk to me. I'm doing all that nonsense. I tell him, as you finish this rubbish, collect your last salary with the cashier, go out of this place and never return. Any good PTA, they should clap for you as the director of that school. And say you are preserving standards they laughed at covenant university laughed at landmark university laughed at mountaintop university but these universities today are bringing a standard that is almost getting to cambridge and harvard because they kept god don't throw god and think it will go well with you we'll continue next week six precepts to keep and preserve God in a territory. Which one have you missed? Would it be prayer, warfare and intercession? Could it be that you neglect the convergence of believers? You come to the house of God today, you come after one month, or you come to the house of God today, you come when all your arrears are paid, only to come and testify. Have you positioned yourself to be used by God for an open display of miracles? Almost every family located here has the hand of Satan roaming somewhere. What is it still doing there when you come from that family? Apostle, can you come and visit us? Try first. Try first. Don't get used to all this. I, I, love, I love his testimony. Right? Pastor Lawrence, I love his testimony. It's not all about, oh, apostle prayed for me and I got a miracle. No, I came here. Apostle taught me. I carried that understanding back home. And I said, Daddy, I know that for 35 years, no door has opened in this family. But I came all the way from Zaria with an anointing. I'm using the opportunity of this strike. Can we pray and fast for just two days and let's watch what God does? And in two days, something that did not happen in 30 years happens. You have revealed Christ to that environment. And finally, we must mentor the younger believers. But the younger believers themselves must open up themselves to be mentored. Because there are many proud, proud people, proud people. You touch somebody, he just falls down. And you get up and this colleague mentality that people carry around colleague mentality some of you are in secondary school or maybe you have loved ones in secondary school thank God for what God is doing with them and all of a sudden this pompous arrogant attitude you see everybody and what is there 
you see vision i see vision you pray for the sick i pray for the sick it's why we never receive we keep making mistakes that are avoidable mistakes now let me tell you mentorship can destroy you if the mentor doesn't know what he's doing because some people actually submitted themselves truly to be mentored but they were mentored by people who didn't know what they were doing and they taught them rubbish they taught them pride they taught them a pompous life they taught them a theology of imbalance it matters who you listen to it matters who you open up your spirit to but that spirit must be open brothers and sisters our generation is at stake in the next 10 or 20 years many of the people we look at today will be gone is, is the truth do you believe that many of our fathers they are already wrapping up we insulted them we said ah they came and they taught people cover your head don't cover your head we insulted them they taught people die 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 we insulted them now the button is being passed to us let's hear what our children will say about us we insulted them we refused to see what god was doing through them and as young as we are we kept running our mouth insulting them they preserved the button some of them today look at great men like papa people like billy graham still alive these men serve god to the end let's not insult them and not be able to reach 10 years in consistency that's the song, my very powerful song. That's the last song we'll sing this night. When it's all been said and done, there is just one thing that matters. Did I live my life? I can't remember it again. Did I live my life for you? When it's all been said and done, listen, all my treasures will be nothing. The jeep and the duplex, only what I've done for love's reward will stand the test of time. Am I against prosperity? No. But if that's all you can give a generation, if all you can give your child, is secular education and a degree you have failed lord your mercy is so great that you look beyond our weakness and find precious gold in mary clay turning sinners into saints and i will always sing your praise Here on earth and ever after For you've told me heaven's my true home When it's all been said and done You're my life when life is gone Listen, we're not going to be here forever No matter how you don't want to believe me Nobody there is no man on earth who is 200 years old 200 years ago none of us on earth today was on earth don't live your life foolishly we owe our generation and our children a debt I will never except God takes my life but it will not be when I'm alive that I'll see darkness loom over the nations of the earth. If it means my life going for it, let it go. But the ordinances of the kingdom must be preserved in our generation. This is ministry. If you are not ready for this, don't jump around and talk nonsense. A lady sent me a text today, passionately. She may be following, listening. And she said, Apostle, she's from my village. She said, Apostle, come to my village. Why have you not come? I said, don't worry. You think I won't come there? I'm coming. God is counting on you. Listen carefully. I'm rounding up. God is counting on you. 
I'm not a man of God, it doesn't matter. There are souls. If God planned that in Pastor Alpha's lifetime, you are supposed to save 100 million people. Do you know if you save 20 million people, the world will clap for you. But it's when you get to heaven, God will say you left 80 million people to go to hell because you did not manifest. If God has anointed you to heal 1 million people, and you documented 100,000 testimonies. They will register you in the Christian Hall of Fame. But when you get to heaven, you hear nonsense. Our works will be tried by fire. Let's make business with God. This wastage of time. Let us start with our Jerusalem, Zaria. Let us start with Nigeria. You see what is happening in Nigeria? You know what most of us are doing? What is happening in this nation? Those who are for A, those who are for B. But the preservers of the ordinances of God know that there are spirits. They can read the writings on the wall. That this is not an issue of north, south, east or west. This is the devil eyeing a generation that wants to love God. And the preservers of the truth say, it doesn't matter where I come from. Lord, it is your kingdom that must be established. Can we take a few minutes to pray tonight? Rise up on your feet. There's gonna be a great awakening. There's gonna be a great revival in our land. There's gonna be a great awakening. And everyone who draws on Jesus. And let's pray over Zaria. Lord, we are preservers of the ordinances of God in Zaria. Let's start with our city. Let's start with our location. Revival. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Shakata Bakoto Lord, we pray the glory of God across Zaria City, across Savo. Across prison, across Shika, in the name of Jesus, your ordinances in this land is preserved. Preserved in our campuses, preserved in every church, preserved in every organization that calls upon the name of the Lord. We decree and we declare it. Hallelujah. There's an old revival song that was. How many of you know it? I, I pray you know it. The eyes of the Father run to and fro. You know that song? He's searching the earth. He's looking for those who make intercession on behalf of the nation. Those who will rise up and pray Who stand on the gap on behalf of our land Who stand in the gap on behalf of our land Down on our knees We'll take a stand And pray for the sea for our land second part it says the power of darkness release our land will never prevail will never withstand the deep intercession by the people of passion those who will rise up and pray Stand in the gap on behalf of the land. We stand in the gap on behalf. 
over Zaria, we curse you. Lift your voice and pray. We curse you from region to region. The powers that keep men poor, the powers that stop the gospel from prevailing in this land, the powers that stop development, the powers that stop advancement, the powers that destroy men of God, the powers that destroy churches, the powers that destroy families. We come against you by the blood. We come against you by the blood. As the church of the Lord Jesus, we come against you. We come against you. Controlling powers over territories spirits of violence spirits of wickedness yokes burdens spells enchantments divination manipulations of the heavenly bodies we come against you in the name of Jesus the body of Christ grows Zaria grows. Whether Christians, whether Muslims, we advance in this city. We are the light of the world. In the name of Jesus, everyone is blessed in this city without prejudice because of the presence of the church. Hallelujah. I know our time is gone, but can we pray for Nigeria? We, listen, as God looks at the map, he's looking for incense. He has found it in other locations. Zaria must represent itself in the realm of the spirit. Let God not see different localities, some villagers, and God will see an uneducated woman intercessor and check Zaria and say, Zaria, where is your incense? I'd like us to pray and say, Nigeria is my business. Nigeria is God's business. Peace to the walls. Peace to the borders. Peace in the east. Peace in the north. Peace everywhere. We fortify the borders of this territory in the name of Jesus we declare and declare we manifest our priesthood we are lampstands we are lampstands priests unto God we raise an incense of intercession over this nation Nigeria is God's own nation Nigeria amalgamated by the hand of God himself. We command from border to border the spirits of bloodshed. We curse you. We curse you. We curse you. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. Let's pray against the spirit of sentiment. Are we together? Whether Christian whether Muslim, the truth is that we must live alone and we must live together. Are we together? Whether, whether Igbo, whether Yoruba, whether South South, whether Northerner, the truth of the matter is that there's nothing we can do about ourselves. We were brought by God. Let's cause the spirit of darkness.
Hallelujah. Mighty on your throne. I'll never forget one time I was praying. Praying seriously, I was in the spirit. And I had a vision. I saw that there is a tree that is close to where I stay. And I didn't see that tree again. I just saw a great beast like, like, a, like a being. The tail was a snake. The eyes were big like human head. Imagine this head now like an eye. Two of them. One here, one here. And the spirit was looking at me with fierce anger. And all he told me is, so you think you can bring God's people into prosperity. And then it left. That was it. Mighty on your throne. Mighty on your throne. That's the reason why every time Satan wants to destroy you, the devil will now cause you to disrespect that person. So your mother may be an anointed woman and you will fight and tear and say over my dead body for you to pray with me and satan will say amen let's go and then the oppression starts because your pride and your arrogance will not allow you to go to the person and say help me tonight we are going to cry to the king of kings i don't know if you came for this miracle service especially for those who are family people here you should never go back the same you see the results of people 4.8 5 points they have always had that ability even when they were getting one point it's a spirit that makes that happen don't let anyone fool you you are not so daft human beings were created intelligent when you enter an exam hall and you write nonsense and come out with zero and smile and say it's just because i didn't read well is that really true how many of you watch film twice to explain it you sit down and watch a three hour film once and you can come out and recite that film completely with the hair of the actor's wife and that was you didn't read for it yet you spent six months or five months reading for one course and then at the end of it you come and fail it and get nonsense and you keep convincing yourself it's just that i didn't get it it is the reason why you can read a novel of 1,000 pages, but a lifetime, you can't read half of the Bible because there is a spirit stopping you. If this was a novel, some of us would say, take this, I will bring it for you next week Friday and you will exhaust it. But from the day you were born, the day you were born, till today, you have not read up to one third of the Bible. One time you cried and prayed and fasted and started and three days later, Remember when you carried your devotional and did balance brought forward. You started reading from two weeks back as a sign of repentance. After you read it, you now threw it away. Because you cannot help yourself in the flesh. It takes the anointing of the spirit. That's why he sends carpenters. That's why he puts miracle services like this. So that you can come under the influence of God's power. How about genotype issues? SS. You get up and find out you are SS or AS. Do you know the Bible never mentions the issue of SS or AS? Are you aware of that? That thing was a technology that was fabricated by Satan. To stop people from getting married. You see a beautiful lady. Who has a prophet in her womb to come. And then one spirit just brings one, one demonic report called SS. And they say sorry we can't join you because you are going to kill your children for that devil is a liar in this place tonight i'm challenging you because when we rise we are going to pray the miracles will start as we pray you've got to be angry with yourself and say no enough is enough enough is enough we are come to mount zion where there is an innumerable company of angels where there is the blood of sprinkling the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than any covenant that speaketh better things than any ordinance the good news is that jesus has paid the price our job is to enforce that victory are you getting my point we enforce that victory by engaging the mysteries of the kingdom that bring for liberty we are going to pray that that power that has tied our destinies down 
it must let us go same power that conquered the grave lives in me lives in me your love that rescued the earth lives in me lives in me same power that conquered the grave lives in me lives in me yeah. your love that rescued the earth lives in me lives in me sing it two more times with faith in your heart same power that conquered the grave lives in me lives in me your love that rescued the earth lives in me lives in me jump up on your feet and we sing it one more time same power that conquered the grave lives in me Your love that rescued the earth lives in me, lives in me. One more time with faith in your spirit. Say, power that conquered the grave lives in me, lives in me. Your love that rescued the earth lives in me. Listen, deliverance, therefore, is a separation. It's the spiritual process that experientially brings the separation between you and the forces and influences. The spirits that attempt to influence your life. The legal separation. Brothers and sisters, when that happens to you, then you will see gates open by themselves when that happens to you you will see realms of favor all these things people pray on you must challenge those spirits you must challenge those spirits on behalf of yourself and your family and God is ready for us tonight I tell you God is ready for us tonight lift your voice in one minute and bless him for this word the body without a spirit is dead the body without a spirit is dead now I realize that there is a spiritual component to the challenges in my life lift your voice and thank you for this revelation Lord I now realize that there is a spirit component to the failure in my family there is a spirit component to the retrogression in my life there is a spirit component to my lack of admission there is a spirit component to my lack of marriage there is a spirit component to the poverty in my family are you praying tonight let the dissatisfaction rise from you. Ma prata da baka te prata ke le bato ko sopra te bela le bos. Oh, come on! Tonight is your night of liberty. Same path. Conquer the grave lives in me, lives in me. Your love that rescued the earth lives in me, lives in me. Just the voices, sing it from your heart. Same power that conquered the grave lives in me, lives in me. The power that can challenge any altar. The power that can challenge any force of witchcraft. 
any generational cause. One more time, sing it. That conquer the grave lives in me, lives in me. Yeah. Your love that rescued the earth lives in me, lives in me. Same power, Same power. that conquer the grave lives in me, lives in me. Your love, your love, say your love that rescued the earth is in me, lives in me. Hallelujah. Lift up your voice right now and mention everything you know that is a tragic event in your life and challenge it. Say it must stop tonight. Lift your voice. Oh, come on, Koinonia, you should be praying. Ha pare ke 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 patata mandala tata challenge the spirit challenge the spirit behind failures challenge the spirit behind marital delays challenge the spirit Challenge the spirit of death from your family. Challenge the spirit of death. Challenge the spirit. Challenge the spirit. He must let you go tonight. He must let you go tonight. Those outside, I hope you are praying. This is your destiny tonight. The body without a spirit is dead. Hallelujah. 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 Look up, please. Your failure without the spirit that sponsors it is dead. Barrenness without the spirit that sponsors it is dead. Are you getting what I'm saying? The key to liberty is to evict the spirit that initiates that thing. For a body without a spirit is dead. Any cause without a spirit backing it is dead. It's null and voice. Any pronouncement, any enchantment without a spirit is dead therefore i want you to lift your voice and i want you to declare forget about the problems lift your voice and speak as a believer that you are to every spirit address it behold i give you power over snakes scorpions Oh yes he must leave you tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. There are spirits that will never allow you to walk in the anointing. They will never let your eyes open to see visions. And even when it opens, they will... They will bring you into error so that everything you see misleads you into trouble. I'd like you to lift your voice again. Just do what I'm asking you to do. 
from the realm of the heavens challenge powers challenge forces over your finances Oh, it must change. It must change. It must change. It must change tonight. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. My goodness. It's a strong anointing in this place. Oh, it must let you go tonight. Who says that breakthrough will not come? Who says that marriage will not come? Who says that cancer cannot die? Who says that HIV cannot live? Maka kapata. Lift your hands to the heavens. Lift your hands. My goodness. All I see in this room and outside is fire. That's all I see. Fire. You will see deliverance tonight like you have never seen. This one is the one that will bring your miracle. Listen. As this prayer goes on, miracles will start immediately. Many of you will start getting reports from your body. Many of you will be open to visions. Right now, lift your hands. Hallelujah. My goodness, there is such a heavy unction on me. It's for deliverance tonight. It must give way for you to move forward. At the count of three, hear me. Listen, I want you to shout Jesus at the top of your voice. At the top of your voice is a prophetic instruction as you shout it fire some of you visions your eyes will be open in the spirit you will see covens catching fire Matalabata, father you told me tonight is a night of deliverance there are families under bondage there are businesses under bondage enough is enough let your fire bring deliverance. Are you ready now? At the count of three, may heaven invade this place. One, two, three. Second, second, I command covens. I command altars. I command spirits. Kaporotose. Bring them out. Fire! 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 Brings deliverance tonight. Baraka bariba taya. Iba la kusenge nge 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 ba. Shaka ba 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 ba. Embrotos tete. Shaka te 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 te. Reke te 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 te. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! The Holy Ghost is showing me a vision. We are going to shout it again. Please don't do it here. I see many people vomiting poison. Physical poison. As you shout, physically, it will come out. Lift your voice. Bata, bata. Shaka, ta, ta, ta. Mare, tende, tepa. Father, anything that has been planted 
in the body of anyone right now as you shout Jesus we have victory one two three he must let you go he must let you go you are coming out of their lives you are coming out of their lives you are coming out of their lives My goodness fire is burning in this place fire is burning in this place fire is burning in this place the devil must let you go the devil must let you go the devil must let you go the Lord is giving me a word right now there are ladies here there is a spirit that comes to you in the night to oppress you to sleep with you right now lord where are they let that fire let that fire bring deliverance right now right now right now right now every spirit husband every manifestation every spirit wife every devil that has leads to you it leaves you now now right now He must leave you now. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me a lady. You see physical snakes. Where is that lady? Physically, physically. It appears to you. Physically. The lady is right here. Please come out. I don't know who that lady is. Physical snake. It appears to you. You see it. Let me tell you something. After this miracle service, you will see advancement in your life in a way that will surprise you. That's when you will know that Satan is not as powerful as he looks. Hallelujah. Lift your voice and pray. Any covenant that ties me to anything of the fathers, I've been called out of every tribe, every tongue. I am a, I'm a new creation, no longer connected to ancestry. Lift your voice and pray. Every altar that connects me to my fathers, Every witchcraft that attempts to connect me. No, I'm in Christ. I'm in Christ. I'm in Christ. I'm in Christ. Hallelujah. 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 We we'll pray for the sick, but there are miracles happening right now. When I call your, your case, just check it and come out here right now. I'm seeing, I'm seeing a lady. Please check it. There's like a growth right here at the side of your breast. Check it right now. You'll find out that it's gone. Check it right now right now and make your way to the front i see someone having severe pain your tie right under here your tie there is severe pain severe pain the lord is healing that person right now please check yourself and make your way to the front right now check yourself make your way to the front i'm seeing two ladies you came here with heaviness there is heaviness on your chest it's just like something heavy god is healing people can you appreciate jesus hallelujah there are miracles happening
make your way to the front now we'll give you room to testify stand here all the people that are coming out for miracles just stand here right now there are miracles that are happening i see someone like your nose it's like there is an irritation in your nose while we were praying you felt like there was fire on it and now it's lifted now it's lifted completely it's gone right now right now right now i'm seeing someone severe peptic ulcer it hooks you hooks you very seriously as we started praying it just disappeared who is that make your way to the front right now right now right now i see a lady you hear a voice telling you you will die not a vision a physical voice physical voice it tells you you will die a physical voice physical voice it speaks to you physically can you help me all the please if i don't call anybody's case i'm going to pray for the sick i'm calling miracles cases that have happened help me um aaron would you help me just examine these people and then we'll take a few testimonies god is giving people miracles miracles right now miracles right now miracles are happening right now i'm seeing somebody listen there is a growth you came here with the growth at the back of your neck check it now it has disappeared check it now now and make your way to the front put your hand there and check it you will find out that that growth is gone completely i'm seeing two holes two holes of a left teeth being healed right now check it you won't find the hole again two holes two holes of your teeth check it right now and make your way to the front my goodness god is doing miracles in this place there are miracles that are happening miracles that are happening i saw this same case in kaduna this morning now i'm seeing four people four people there is one guy and three ladies you have pile pile for one of the ladies when you go to ease yourself it's as if you are giving birth blood comes out go and check yourself now you find out that that pile is gone gone back to the devil go and check it please please we are not playing games don't sit back confirm your miracle and seal it i know there is a guy i saw a guy pile severe pile hallelujah the lord is showing me a lady tears just start coming out of your eyes without any you are not crying but it just starts coming out it's very embarrassing it starts coming out right now the lord is healing you wherever you are confirm it and make your way to the front right now confirm it and make your, your way to the front right now right now confirm it and make your way to the front we'll give all of them room to testify god is healing people right now i'm seeing someone with this finger look at me this finger this very finger that's what the lord is showing me there is a miracle happening on that finger this very one i don't know if it broke or something happened to it but there is a miracle happening to that finger right now right now i'm hearing a name gabriel 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 who is gabriel 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 the lord is bringing a a miracle for gabriel gabriel i've been fighting this name but let me bring it out i'm hearing a name asabe i don't know if it's a woman or somebody in a family asabe asabe i'm hearing that name who is asabe please confirm make sure you confirm it let's not huh you are asabe uh but i'm seeing another person again no oh. eh? this you are asabe. please stand here miracles everywhere come tell us very quickly come come please help us give aaron let's let's coordinate them okay come sir let's just listen to this give them the mic lawrence just testify tell us look at the crowd straight to the point what happened to you what is the miracle praise the lord 
I am the girl who the man of God prophesied. I have an irritation in my nose since 2012. 2012. Yes. And now what happened? Every day, once I put my hand, I, I always notice blood coming out. But now, I felt something drop out of my nose. That devil leaves you forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. Free. Give Jesus praise. God is doing miracles here. All kinds of miracles are happening in this place. Please, the next people, let's have them come very quickly. Just turn and let's testify. Don't look at me. Look at the crowd. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I, I have this bonus. While we are confession. talking, there is a lady who will come strongly me. under the anointing outside. Please pick that lady and bring her. Hallelujah. As we are talking, the power of God is, in fact, two ladies. Two ladies outside, mightily by the anointing. Please pick them and bring them. Yes, ma'am. Hallelujah. On my left thigh, I have this burning sensation. I don't even know what cause, but I know that once it starts, it burns me as if I'm sitting on fire. Okay. But now it's gone. And since last hearing this voice saying I will die, even when I was coming last week, I had this fear that I was going to... But right now, it's gone. completely gone. Give Jesus praise. God bless you. Yes, please. Check yourself. If you see a miracle, you can come out. We are going to pray for the sick, but we want to take testimonies. We'll give you an opportunity to tell us what God is doing. Mama, please stand up. Please don't let Mama sit down for God's sake. Give her a chair. Mama should not be kneeling down. Praise the yes, Lord. please. Sometimes I normally feel pains in my chest. Sometimes I normally feel pains in my chest, but now I feel very... Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. Any pain? Any pain? Is there any pain? Is there any pain? Give Jesus praise. Yes, please. Praise God. While he was preaching, I was having peptic ulcer. So peptic ulcer. Out, but while we started praying, it left me. And There's I'm one praying. more outside. Go and carry her. Jesus. It left me immediately. Now I'm not feeling it again. No pain again. Give Jesus praise. Yes, ma'am. Praise the, praise the Lord. I used to have this heavy pain on my chest since 2002. But, um... When I went to see the doctor, they said it was pneumonia. It's, sometimes I can't breathe. Pneumonia. The pastor said that we should shout Jesus. I can't breathe. I can't shout too much. But the moment I shout Jesus, I fell on the floor. Everything just left you. No pain again. Praise the Lord. Let me pray for you. It never returns to you. In the name of Jesus. I'm seeing someone with an eye problem. I don't know what the eye problem is, but it's living right now. Please confirm yourself. Eye problem. Check it. Check it. We are not playing games, please. Check it. Check it. Eye problems. I'm seeing a miracle happening right now. Eye problem. Confirm it and come out right now. I'm seeing this at least 10 people with this case. At least 10, like the lower abdominal region right here. You've been having se severe pain. It's like something pulls you there. Check it right now. You'll find out that you receive a miracle. At least 10 people. Please make your way to the front at least 10 people check it right now god is doing a miracle don't sit back inside and outside lower abdominal region lower abdominal region that miracle is happening right now right now right now at least 10 people 10 people with that pain as soon as you check it make your way to the front celebrate jesus god is healing them they are coming they are coming all of you you can come and stand here the moment you receive a miracle please stand here they'll confirm you at least 10 ladies right at this lower abdominal region hallelujah i'm seeing a gentleman you came here with a throat condition in fact um let me just describe to you they are telling you they want to take you somewhere to cut the throat it's like there is an elongation some i'm seeing them saying they want to use is it knife or something and cut something that uh, an elongation who is that person the lord is healing you right now right now you can't swallow things you always feel like it's like bone but it's like there is something on your throat almost perpetually right now check it check it check it completely the power of god is coming upon you there is a lady god is healing your mother but the power of God will come upon you as a witness to that. Lord, where is that lady right now? Where is that lady? Identify her, oh God, by the power of God. Right now. Right now. Right now. Please bring the lady out. 
God is healing her mother right at home. And God is using what is happening as, as a point of contact. As a point of contact. Shabaratoko subaradabaladaba. Nengredu so supratishi baladaba. I'm still seeing breast lump disappearing like a lump. I'm seeing one on the left, left side. Please check it, check it. When you receive a miracle, testimony is one way to seal it and keep it. The Lord is showing me three ladies. Your hair falls. Every time you go to comb your hair, you literally comb your hair and bring out a copious amount of your hair that is removing this thing is a serious thing you have used medication and it has not stopped a miracle is coming to those people right now a miracle is coming to those people yes let's take the testimony quickly please loud and straight to the point the Lord. help I us sound please can you help us with this mic i used to have this pen down my stomach here but now i'm not feeling completely okay. gone yes are you sure yes. How long has it been? Come on, Koinonia. Let's not get too used to miracles in this place. Hallelujah. It never returns to you in the name of Jesus Christ. The next person, please. My goodness, look at what God is doing. God is giving people miracles. Go ahead. My name is like I'm pregnant. It's to come like pain as in I'm pregnant and I've been complaining that for months. But today, when the prayer was going on, I felt relieved and my stomach is In fact, open. as she was talking, hold on. The Lord opened my eyes. There is a lady your stomach is already swelling this is almost is even beginning to embarrass you it's not just like a stomach protruding you are feeling it very hard and stiff and it's you are afraid because it's looking like it's a situation of a fibroid please check it right now god is giving you a miracle god is giving you a miracle god bless you bless you quickly when they say we should shout, praise the Lord. So I now shout. The stomach used to pay me even before I come to Zaria, but I can't feel it again. Yes. Give Jesus praise. It never returns again. Yes, please. Praise the Lord. Um, recently, I started having this eye pain. When I'm walking, doing other things, one of the eyes get blank and I don't see again. But now, after the prayers, I feel one sharp pain and I used to have this abdominal pain almost all the time, but it just left me immediately. Give Jesus praise. It never returns to you again in the name of Jesus. Glory be to Jesus Christ. This abdominal pain starts two days ago. So, I came here and when I was praying, I just received total deliverance and complete deliverance please help them so that they don't fall on, on praise the lord the abdominal pain normally comes and go and when i was outside i was still feeling my stomach hooking such that i could not stand well i was bending and then when the man of god spoke i got up and stretched and to the glory completely of the lord, no pain again come on give jesus praise give jesus praise the lord mine is more of um creativity ideas that god is to give me every day when i'm in my quiet time and it's it happens that every time i try to push further i realize that there are a lot of setbacks distractions and uh, confusions that comes my way and right now, but what right happened? now when at the mention of the name jesus i felt my body on fire I can't really understand what was going on. On fire, a restoration yes. of that creativity yes, co sir. comes to you yes, in sir. the name of the Lord Jesus amen. Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you. Praise the Lord. I came here with a severe eye eating. At a shout of Jesus, everything just wiped out. Completely. Believe me, that name works. <laughs> yes, sir. Praise the Lord. I have a medical report from Shika concerning pain. In the pain joint. you went to the hospital yeah what did they say is wrong with you they, did, they couldn't see anything they couldn't see anything yeah okay and when you were praying you prophesied that there is a uh, 10 people here that that god is working on yes. their system and, and now what has happened to you the pain is gone. the pain is completely even gone the medical, Jesus praise. even the medical report is in my room the medical report is in your room yeah. you go and check yourself and you find out all of you that were under the anointing when you get up don't just go back to your seat check you'll find out that all kinds of things have happened you are not just falling for nothing praise the lord praise 
Praise the Lord. I'm trusting God for a new set of dentition. My teeth are just... Go ahead. <laughs> the power of God is on her. Oh, Father, complete what you have started in the name of Jesus. I stretch my hands towards you in the name of Jesus. Because your faith can receive it, let it have it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you. Next person, please. Praise the Lord. After we take this trip, people, and, um, it's okay. Um, there's okay. this pain that I usually used to have by, um, from under my armpit to the left side of my breast. Okay. So when um, you mentioned the keys, I was not too sure if I was the one. But later you specify by saying the, your left side of your breast. I noticed like it's swelling up and sometimes I very I feel like very, a swelling there. Yeah. yeah and I now feel, have you checked it? Yes. I, Is there I, anything I there? Okay Completely gone. Come on, give Jesus praise. It never returns again in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. I want to thank God for the spirit of fear, as in I do get scared a lot, but I now I'm free in the name the of The spirit of fear. Come. It never returns to you again by the power of the Holy Ghost. You are free from the spirit of fear in Jesus' name. Yes, please. Praise the Lord. I want, to, I want to thank God for healing me from the lower abdomen. I used to have this pain right from child. When, when, I, was, when I was young, I used to have this pain. But when you were praying and you asked us to shout Jesus, I, I feel relieved. I just Completely. want to thank God. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God bless you, my dear. Praise God. Praise the name of the Lord. I don't know. Sometimes second of August, this very month, this is my middle finger. Help her. Fire is landing on people. I started having pain around this region, affecting this finger mostly. I can barely use it, but since he prayed during the miracle session, I got healed. I announced, I saw I've been that shaking, baby, I've a been finger. shaking it. I've been shaking it and I'm No pain having, now. Come on, no give pain. Jesus praise, everybody. Praise. Where are the two ladies, Asabe, that I called? I called some two ladies, Asabe. The Lord is changing the story of your family. Listen, Mama is Asabe. Huh? Please, you should not stress Mama. If she's, if she's out because she's sick, Mama Kizona Zamiki Adwa, please. You should not stress this old woman. If she should, even when she's coming out, carry her with the chair and just keep her here. We'll pray for her please the lord is is wiping the tears in your family you believe that when a word comes like this, it comes to give you liberty hold my hands father in the name of jesus i end this oppression in this family right now it goes forever in the name of jesus who has an elder brother who has an elder brother do you, do you have an elder brother yes. what is he doing he's a carpenter he's a carpenter yes the person i'm i'm talking about didn't go to school though is your brother yes. where is he he's in the village he's in the village god is going to lift him what is this thing that i'm seeing them <laughs> laughing at him and they are saying it it's not his fault that he didn't go to school even you is by the grace of god that you are here it's not like maybe yes. it's that your, your people are sponsoring you and all of that is the favor of god yes but god as a sign go and tell him call him after koinonia that the Lord said is going to connect him to a rich man. He should be faithful to that man. Amen. That man will bless him. Amen. Father, let there be breakthrough in this family. In the name of Jesus. Asabe. Gabriel. Oh, your name is Gabriel. Your name too is Gabriel, sir. Who is Titi Lyo? Titi Lyo. I'm hearing a name, Titi Lyo. Please, let's save time. Our time is gone. Um, we still have to pray for the sick. Titi Layo. I'm hearing the name Titi Layo. Titi Layo. Who is working here, sir? You're, you're working. You're both working. Okay. I'm going to pray for you because I'm seeing the Lord bringing... The Lord is... Sir... It won't be too long. You are leaving Gusau. We spoke, at least we spoke. That one is not word of knowledge. We, we spoke about it, but it won't be too long. The Lord is lifting you to another place. Go and write it down. This will happen to you. It won't be too long. Write it down. You will come back and testify before them. It's not a disadvantage. It's something that will bless you in no small way. Because you have come with your heart open. 
in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ father I lay my hands I pray right now that you bring your word to pass concerning his life in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I hear breakthrough for you sir this is what I hear the Lord is saying I should announce breakthrough to you father I hold his hands and I announce breakthrough in Jesus name praise the Lord Your mother is sick. What's wrong with her? She has been bleeding for the past one year. Bleeding? You, you can see the kind of demonic thing we are talking about here. Huh? Your mother bleeding for one year non-stop. How about that? And you fell under the anointing? No, sir. You, you are just standing to agree yes, for her. Okay, no problem. We have a session for that. But since you came out, hold my hands. Hold my hands. Look at me. Do you believe God will touch your mother? Where is she? Where is home? Taraba. Taraba State. Yes, sir. You are from Taraba. Yes, sir. Lord, show Mama mercy right now in the name of Jesus Christ. As it touches you, it touches her. Please don't just come out at will. Ah, you are related to her. Your sister is Titilayo. Yes, sir. Where is she? She's in Kaduna. What's she doing? She's schooling at Kaduna. She's schooling. Okay, let's pray for her. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, what are you doing? You. I'm a student, sir. Where? KPSS. Eh? Knowledge is power. Secondary school. Okay, knowledge is power. Yes, sir. Your sister is where? Kaduna. Kaduna. Yes, sir. Tell her, is she married? No, sir. Tell her marriage is coming for her. Are you hearing me? You believe it? Because she has been praying about this. Your mother, where's your mother? Your mother has been joining her to pray. Yes, your mother even went to a man of God and they prayed about yes. this thing. Is yes, that true? Your mother went to a man of God to pray. Go and tell her that the Lord is saying marriage comes for her. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns. Hallelujah. Now, please, this is the time to minister specially to sick people. You know the nature of our programs here. We will need a lot of time. So, if you are not sick, if you are escorting somebody, please just bring the person and go back. And once they pray for you, don't wait for another prayer. One touch is okay. Some of you, when they pray for you, you refuse. You still stand back. Please, once they pray for you, just check yourself and go back. Praise the Lord. And then, don't keep going back and coming out and saying you are doing this and that. If you came with somebody who is sick, now is the time to bring them out while we are praying. Please arrange them. Now is Mama's time. All, this, all our mothers, they can make their way now. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wings. Come on and love. Our God is an awesome God. Our God. Please clear the way for them. Clear the way for sick people. From heaven above with wings. Come on and love. Those under the anointing, just, just carry them and keep them gently somewhere. hallelujah now let's save time while we are praying for the sick all of you begin to submit your prayer request please i permit you to put on your phone if you need to call your loved ones to send you prayer requests call them because what god is doing tonight is unusual call them and tell them there's fire upon this place they should submit their prayer request ushers please begin to go around those online those who are connecting with us through the internet they can also connect by faith as we trust God for miracles. Worship team, please get set. You'll be giving us powerful worship songs. We'll just pray for our elderly ones. Let the Lord touch them and then he will give us peace. Please and please, um, when we pray for you, you clear the way. You do mighty things. You do glorious things. Stretch your hands and let's pray for our mother. 
wipe the tears of your parents listen let me tell you any child hear me i'm saying this especially to we young people any child that makes himself an instrument of pain to your mother do you know you bring a curse upon your life when you do that whatever spirit is bringing hardship on our mother and making her children not to succeed the way it should pray for her children in the name of jesus christ Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well done, sir. Please sit down. Who's your dad? Welcome, sir. Straight, straight to the point. His legs have swollen because it's been long I saw him. He's been, he can't breathe well. And at the same time, he's having a problem with Mama. None of the children look at him except me. The same problem that Mama is having, that he's grateful for. It's just a similar thing. We are eight. Oh, it's paining you, sir. We are going to pray for you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, stretch your hands towards our daddy. Please participate in the service. That's why you came. Hallelujah. No, no, no. Daddy, sit down. Please sit down. Sit down. Please, let's stretch our hands. 25 years of witchcraft. This is witchcraft. This is not sickness. 25 years of wickedness and oppression. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Let there be deliverance, O oh God. Baba, I'm going to pray for you. Well, we are praying for you now. Jesus Christ is going to touch you. Father, let Baba return with a testimony. I lay my hands in the name of Jesus and I cancel the plague of witchcraft in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Please, after today, check him and don't cry. Don't cry, eh? Clean your tears. Clean your tears. Baba, they will watch you and they will see the improvement and you will let us know. Since it's not something we can check, you are already walking in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I pray in the name of Jesus that the power of God will come here right now as I lay my hands upon you, I want you to believe. We all came here because we trust Jesus Christ. And there will be a miracle. Those of you who are sitting down, be connecting to the healing anointing, you are the one who will be doing this. The goal is not for one person to do this. That as you are watching, something will come upon you. Thank you, Jesus. You're a faithful God. Awesome is your name. You do my Awesome is your name. You do mighty things. You do glorious things. You're our God. Awesome is your name. You do mighty things. You do glorious things. You're a faithful God. Awesome is your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at a very awesome serious situation. Can you flash this, this baby? Look at, can you believe? Listen, can you believe for God's sake that this baby, as beautiful as this child is, the brain is not developing? Look at this. Who told you the brain is not developing? The doctor, and we've done CT scan. You've done CT scan. You have your evidence. They said the brain is not developing. Remember, remember our teaching. A body without a spirit. There must be a spirit that is stopping this brain. How can a baby like this? This is an apostle. This is a prophet. This is a great man. Oh, what, male or female? Male. Male. Man of God in the making. 
and a spirit come how would you like to have a child that do you know what it means for the brain not to develop that child becomes like an imbecile forever in the name that is above all names we lay hands upon this child we are not only praying that God will heal him but God will use him my God I pray right now let the brain begin to develop we cause the spirit that is responsible for this wickedness right now in the name of Jesus from village I go election I will charm from village look at this mama went for election they fired something upon her head now she's mad is she mad is she your dog now yes. you are mad no you are you are not mad in the name of Jesus say I'm not mad I'm not mad in the name of Jesus whoever organized that charm on your head it returns back to them seven four in the name of Jesus Christ Mama, I'm praying for you right now. Every charm, every enchantment, you came to this place tonight. It ends in the name of Jesus. You are her daughter, you are her daughter, in the name of Jesus Christ. Even as it releases your mother, it releases you. Mama, you are free in the name of Jesus Christ. What's wrong? Accident, sir. Accident. Yes, sir. This guy, for a long time, the spirit of death has been following you. Eh? come do you know why the spirit of death is disturbing you i'm looking at you don't feel embarrassed eh i'm looking at you but i'm seeing you smoking something eh tell me the truth don't tell me this is what death would have killed you you are smoking a uh, uh, what do they call this thing eh? in jaham you go yes, sir. is that not true yes, sir. you are smoking the devil wants to kill you this is look at look at this Look at this. Can you see this? Look at this. Because this is not the first time. Every time I see this guy, I see a whirlwind on his head. You, you know that the devil is after your life. You are now adding a go to it. Jesus came that you will be saved. Are you getting me? You are ready to give your life to Jesus Christ. Genuinely. Eh? Oh, oh, you are. 
but you are still with those your friends yes, sir. you are still with those your friends yes, sir. we cancel those relationships right now Amen. i'm seeing you sitting down with a group of people yes. they are smoking and they are giving you to smoke but you are saying you have repented yes, and they are even laughing at you yes, you have to leave them we cancel that relationship in jesus name the bible hear me don't say i'm not doing it but i'm sitting down where others are doing it the bible says blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked nor stands in the way of sinners nor sit in the seat of the scornful he said but his delight is in the law of the lord and on that law doth he meditate day and night i cause that madness in the name of jesus christ and i pray for supernatural healing look at me look at me lift your hands forget about the wound lift it up careful you broke the hand oh it can't lift oh i see no 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 if you can't lift, don't, don't harm yourself i thought you broke your bone that's why i was asking you to lift it father let there be a miracle right now in the name of the lord jesus christ god bless you and anybody who smokes it go in this place if you know you smoke it go or codeine altar once i make the altar call just run and come and kneel down here because tonight is your night of salvation please don't play games with your destiny anything you smoke anything you drink that is outside the jurisdiction of decency the moment there's time for altar call please make your way here we love you but then the lord wants to touch you let's hurry up because our time is gone your name is out
Request right now. At the same time, an altar call is co as an altar call will be going. Those who need Jesus Christ, you are here right now, inside and outside. There are some of our brothers who are smokers and ladies. The ones that I spoke to. Now is the time. You can come before the presence of God. Don't feel bad. We're a family. And any other person, there are those who are saying, "Lord, I'm tired of the way my life is." I need a new beginning. As we pray, please come and wait here. Join this lady very quickly. Celebrate them as they come, inside and outside. Please, let's save time. Celebrate them as they come, inside and outside. God bless you. A new beginning. God is giving you a new beginning. Don't be ashamed. Don't be embarrassed. You are saying, Lord Jesus, I make up my mind to walk with you. God bless you. God bless you. Koinonia, are you celebrating them? God is saving sinners. Keep coming from outside. Please clear the way for them if they are coming. Salvation is a very serious issue. Clear the way for them so that they'll come. Don't let any devil stop you. You are welcome. I know we're out of time. But please make your way to the front right now. Make your way to the front. We love you. No man condemns you. He can give you a new beginning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I salute every one of you here. I don't care what you have done or what you have not done. I want you to know that His Majesty can give you a new beginning. Hallelujah. Lift your right hand and say after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you. I believe you died and rose again. I'm tired of the way my life is. I surrender everything to you. Seriously and completely. From this night, take over my life. Be my Lord and Savior. Let your life come upon me. I break free from habits, from sins, and everything that destroys my life. From today, I'm a child of God. I am saved in the name of Jesus. Let me pray for you. Lord, I thank you for these ones. Unashamedly, they have come before you. Preserve them by your power in the name of the Lord Jesus. I pray that you will use them mightily in the name of Jesus. I break the power of sin over your life. You will never return, especially for those of you who are victims of addictions and smoking. You will never return to it again in the name of Jesus Christ. That power is broken from off your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, I want you to follow a gentleman. They will have your details. And then on Tuesday, unfailingly, please be around. Um, meet with the prayer department. 
and um, they'll fire you up. You'll be with them for at least a month. They will guide you. The gentleman is waving his hand. Salute them, everybody. Congratulate them. Stretch your hands towards a prayer request in one minute. Please, everybody, rise. We're rounding up. Stretch your hands towards a prayer request. Your request is here. Begin to speak. Prophesy. Prophesy over it in the name of Jesus Christ. Prophesy over it. Prophesy over it. Lord, unto you that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Are you praying? Shabakata Lord, do miracles. Every spirit that is responsible for the troubles that are written here, we judge that spirit. Every spirit, every covenant, every influence. Makata lato desetebe. Mande brendo so so prida balada baska prati gede bele rebosh. Brado so prate kete bele rebosh. Every spirit responsible for barrenness here, yeah. responsible for any setback. In the name of Jesus, we challenge it. By the blood of Jesus, we challenge it. By the blood of Jesus, we challenge it. By the blood of Jesus, we challenge it. Lord, let your people have testimonies. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We declare that every request, every request that is presented here is turned into a testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ. And you will stand to testify before the people of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Now lift your hands and receive the prophecy. I decree and I declare over you. Every confusion in your life. Every cry for direction. Right now in the name of Jesus. May you receive direction for the next level of your life. Receive direction for the next level of your life. Receive direction for the next level of your life. Every area of confusion, I arrest it right now. You will hear a voice from behind telling you this is the way. In the name of Jesus Christ. For those who are students, I pray for your academics. The exams that are about to come. Your best result in your various institutions. This exam is what will produce it. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. May you record five points. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray for every family represented here. Whatever has stagnated your family. By this anointing I declare. Move forward. Move forward. Move forward. In the name of Jesus Christ. Everything that has covered your glory. So that the glory of the Lord upon your life will not be seen. In the name of Jesus, we tear that veil off. We tear that veil off. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Whoever needs to help you before next miracle service. I call them forth into your life. Mysterious help us. Mysterious help us. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you fresh grace for prayer fresh anointing for prayer every lack of passion for the things of God I kill it right now in the name of Jesus every carnality and flesh and wordlessness and prayerlessness that is eating up your life it dies a natural death here tonight in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for you with these hands that are lifted, go and begin to produce results. Go and heal the sick. Go and open doors for the oppressed. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray for families that are trusting God for miracle marriages. We release those marriages right now. I pray for families that are trusting God for miracle jobs. We release those jobs right now. Please believe me as I pray. We release those jobs right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Anyone here who the devil is eyeing for death.
that the devil has said you will not see the end of this year in the name of jesus we lift up that embargo we lift up that embargo favor like you have never seen receive it right now open doors like you have never seen receive it right now breakthroughs like you have never seen receive it right now i speak life to every dying thing in your life in the name of jesus christ whoever has rejected you may they look for you in the name of jesus christ i command prophetic dreams mysterious spiritual experiences may god show you the solution to your problems in dreams and visions whoever is behind the failure of your life we command judgment upon them in the name of the lord jesus christ i prophesy unto you access to the mysteries of the kingdom access to deep revelation access to insight in the spirit whenever they are looking for men to favor may they find you may they find you in the name of jesus you are blessed in the city and blessed in the country you are blessed in your going out and blessed in your coming in every tongue that rises up against you will be judged in the name of jesus i declare that the seal of the blood is upon you you have no covenant with failure you have no covenant with death may god use you mightily 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 i declare may the mantle of honor come upon your life that mantle that makes men honor you mysteriously i release it upon your life receive it in the name of jesus receive it in the name of jesus the mantle of honor i pray for you extraordinary intelligence levels of mental acumen in the name of the lord jesus christ extraordinary intelligence i cast out the spirit of fear fear of the future fear of death i rebuke it from your life in jesus name and every depression upon your spirit i release you from it right now every voice that has told you you will not succeed we cancel that voice right now in the name of jesus finally i pray for you passion for the things of god hunger for intimacy with the holy spirit grace for fasting and prayer genuine fasting and prayer access to spiritual power activations of the gifts of the spirit visions and and the move of the spirit upon your life in the name of jesus christ father we give you all the praise in the name of jesus all those worshiping with us for the first time please make your way to the front right now very quickly we're really out of time we have two minutes and we're out please celebrate all those who are worshiping with us some have come from far some from near different states please come we have a prayer and a blessing for you celebrate them koinonia keep clapping they are coming may god bless all of you who have invited them their lives will never be the same in the name of jesus christ hallelujah for all of you who have come here this is koinonia god bless you for being here we're here every fridays is a meeting that is put together by eternity network international you're welcome to fellowship and worship with us again and again and your life will never be the same in the name of the lord jesus christ stretch your hands towards them saints of god and let's bless them we release the blessing upon this house over your life no keep standing don't worry you can stand i prophesy to you in the name of jesus you will leave this place and return with dramatic testimonies whatever you came here with is turned into a testimony in the name of jesus christ i see two of you standing here there's miracle marriage coming for two ladies here specifically i'm seeing two ladies that's the reason why you came specifically i prophesied miracle marriage for you in the name of jesus christ for one of you the person you are going to marry is a banker and he will come to you before october your wedding will happen before december 31st
in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ we decree and declare over your life you will carry an unusual unction and everyone who sees you will know that you have come before the presence of God there is someone here you are standing you are going to have like one week of prophetic encounter stretch one week every night repeatedly you're going to have different people come to teach you certain things and on the sixth night you're going to have an impartation it's like a hand that will be laid upon you it's not demonic in the name of the lord jesus christ we bless you return with evidences return with testimonies in the name of jesus christ thank you so much for coming we love you and we honor you please follow the gentleman waving his hands they'll welcome you more warmly on our behalf and then you have a few details celebrate them koinonia hallelujah hallelujah dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him, that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ, and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then, don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again bye